Hello Internet, I'm Hamster Bomb, and you guys are joining me for Universe Sandbox. I am very excited to finally mess around with this. If you guys know me, I love space stuff. Like, too much. Like, I, I irritate people with um, space stuff whenever it, it pops up or becomes relevant. So, um, that's the thing. Now you know that. I'm very excited to dig into this guy. Also... Um, what I feel like I need to talk about even before then, I haven't been able to talk to you guys in a really long time. I'm sorry about that. I have been so busy lately, um, picking up extra shifts at work. Um, Kim hasn't been doing, uh, fe really just feeling too well lately. There's been a lot of stuff around the house I've had to do. Uh, my parents have recently been sick with a thing that I can't say on stream or else YouTube will get really upset they're okay um i am also fine so is kim and the baby we haven't been well i mean we don't have the baby yet but you know what i mean we haven't um been to see them obviously um and fortunately before they even were sick so um it's all good don't worry about us we're fine i uh, hope you guys are fine as well um it's just been a really really busy time and i just needed oh god to just relax finally so um, luckily, we have this to mess with, and I am very excited to mess with this today, because this looks captivating. Just, just watching what's going on even right now, this is really amazing. So there's a lot of stats that we're actually seeing, too. I haven't even gone through this introduction yet, as you see here. Um, oh, I can even, like, see all sorts of things. Oh, those are way in the distance. Okay. I can actually, it's, it's, it's got, all, like, all sorts of stuff named. This is awesome. Um, different uh, trajectory paths. I like how they color coded them. That helps a lot. Also, we're seeing. Um, oh, the oh, hey, we're getting really close to uh, today. Look at how fast, man. Today's coming up. Uh, we just flew through, flew through horrible 2020 in a matter of moments. Bam, there's today. All right, now we're going to tomorrow. So you know what's really funny of doing that? Can I zoom out? Oh, dude. I know coming up like right about here. I want to see if it's accurate because Jupiter and Saturn, yes, are supposed to align perfectly around that time. So, by the way, just saying, um, late next month, um, I believe it's around the 21st, um, go outside at night, try and see Jupiter and Saturn basically lining up and making like this mega planet. It's going to be awesome. Um, I believe it hasn't happened since like the Middle Ages, so that's gonna be really cool. I'm glad this is this is actually quite accurate. That was one thing I was wondering was like, how accurate is this truly going to be? Because this sure looks like it's going to be so much fun just to screw around with. I'm really excited just to mess with this guy. Uh, but anyway, I am in the live stream lobby um, in uh, Discord. If um, you guys are uh, Patreon members jump on in. Um, also, squad, I saw you posted something there. Since I feel really bad against they haven't even been able to do art streams, you're welcome to join in. I'm sorry I haven't been... I, I am so, so behind. And um, I'm trying to catch back up again. I put in some PTO, so um, for the rest of the year, I wouldn't be working as hard um, at work work so that um, when I'm here... I can do way more streams, just focus on, because like, I've been working so hard on just getting my video a week thing done for you guys, and that is so crazy enough. Man, oh man, in the next few, I'm, I'm so excited about the next few that I get to do. I was so excited about doing No More Heroes as well, but anyway, a bunch of great ones are coming. Really excited to mess with this. Let's learn about this guy. So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, I mentioned Livestream Lobby, it's open, come in and chat. I need to talk with you guys. I just gotta calm down. Just relax today. And also, let me know if the audio is okay. Hopefully, nobody was trying to speak in Discord. Because, yeah, there we go. Then we'd be having some serious problems. But anyway, we're fine. Alright, introduction, part one. Welcome to our solar system. Whoa! Oh, that was... That was neat! This is the Earth. It is home to everyone you know, everyone you've ever met, everyone you will ever meet. Everything you know has happened on that ball right there. And we're allowed to not only go anywhere else, literally anywhere else, 
We can blow it up. We can do all sorts of crazy stuff in here. Whoa! Nice, and this is the sun is the most important source of fuel for life on Earth. You could say that again. That's my favorite star. It's because it's the one that's uh, at least keeping us all here. What if we got rid of it? What? Dude, to remove an object from the simulation, use the delete tool. Okay, so click to... <laughs> this is part of the tutorial? Tools? Oh god, okay, delete. Select the sun. Bonk! Go, oh, oh lord. <laughs> oh god, everything just got, um... Oh man, there's so much debris that's also going too. Without the sun, our entire solar system falls apart. Well, yeah. <laughs> And the Earth gets a little chilly. Oh, nice, it actually simulates that. What do you mean, a little chilly? A little chilly? Like, it's actually the timing of how, um, like, 24 hours on one side versus the other evenly heats and cools the Earth just enough to keep it temperate enough for us to stay alive. Just imagine we had, like, 20-hour days, you know, and what that might do towards our climate. There's planets, like, we've got, like, for example, Venus um, is basically facing the sun at the same rate that its days pass, and I believe the year is shorter than its day because it's facing right of one day is its own rotation versus orbiting all the way around the sun. It goes around the sun before it actually orbits, it's, or like rotates once. That's how wonky things could get. So yeah, you ain't living on Venus. <laughs> Unless you found a way to perpetually keep moving in that in-between zone where you're right at that cusp of it being dawn, you know? <laughs> but even still, the atmosphere and everything there is like, it's, it's a death ball. Earth gets a little chilly, just a little. To rotate the camera, click and drag. Uh, dude, oh, there goes Mercury! See you, Mercury! <laughs> Zoom in and out, use your mouse wheel or touchpad. Let's, oh, dude, look at this. The... There's still lights! <laughs> People are still struggling to survive. That probably shouldn't be here. <laughs> okay, that's gotta just be um part of the textures or something. If we've been flung from the sun, I'm sorry, we're all dead. <laughs> we're all dead. Like, we would never last this long. What did that, we delete the sun, uh, like, three, two, two to three years ago? I think two. Uh, but anyway, look, look at this. It's just slowly this ice encapsulates everything and all your lights turn off. Like, I'm sure it was just a, a like, how do you have a, a nighttime and a daytime version of the ice? But they needed one because this is really, really something. All right, so, oh, the, the polar caps are also getting really huge. The Earth is very cold now, but maybe we can fix this by adding another source of gravity and heat. Well, I mean, pause simulation while we work on a solution. How do I do that? Oh, bam! Add a new star to the simulation. To add an object to the simulation, use the create tool. Ah, tools. Let's add, oh, dude, dude. Oh, dude. Random irregular galaxy just in the middle of this. Oh, wait, so I got, I have Earth right now. We want, we want a sun. Oh, I can grab any type of star. Yay. Oh man, I want a neutron star. I want to really screw stuff up. No, let's not do that yet. We will, oh, we will, we will. But Alpha Centauri B and A. A Betelgeuse, dude, like this is so cool. I was wondering like, how much is this going to have that's accurate? Because I, I know that um, this game, from what I know, is a little over a decade old, and um, if I'm correct, and there's, there's so much that we've learned since then. So I, I don't know, like, oh, just sun. We have the lamest name for our star, don't we? Uh, wait, oh, select the, oh, oh, right. Oh, the blue supergiant. Oh, okay, if that's what you freaking want. Let's put that bad boy right in here. Uh, Rigel is a very large star. It's 23 times more massive than our sun. Um, it, yeah, it's going to start yanking these bad boys back unless we waited too long. Oh, no, we hit pause. Okay, 
should be enough to bring the planets back. Resume the simulation. Click play. We were waiting quite a while. Oh god, here they all come. Not even, not freaking Mercury. Mercury is like, see ya, dudes. Oh god. There, there it goes. Oh no. Funk. <laughs> oh, they're so gone. They are so gone. Earth's slowly coming. It's changing its mind. It's changing its mind, man. It, oh man, Mars is coming. I gotta get closer. We gotta see these, these explosions. Also, we can't see Earth out there too. There goes Mars. Boom! <laughs> Killed us all, thanks. Dude! I'm not killing y'all yet. I'm just watching as Earth slowly <laughs> turns around. And it's like, no, this doesn't look right. All the planets are being sucked in. No dip! What'd you think was gonna happen? That's okay, there's always something <laughs> to learn from an experiment. Gravity. Even Too one that gravity. ends in disaster. Continue the onto the next part of the instruction. Uh, and learn about creating life-sustaining worlds. Or if you want to skip the introduction and start experimenting on your own, select Home Close Guide. I like this guide. But first of all, we gotta see our own demise as we plummet into this super massive star. <laughs> Here we go. No! Oh, we're gonna warp it a bit. Are we? Where'd we go? Yeah, we're gonna. We missed it. Was that us? Just going thunk. No, that was uh, Iris that went spinning around. We definitely went kathunk. Okay. <laughs> okay. How are you doing, by the way? I'm pretty good. I hope my audio and everything's okay, because this is a quiet game, and um, I have no idea what the audio levels look like. So. Uh, it, sound it sounded pretty good before I muted the stream. Okay. Um, that's good. I want to make sure that it's actually working. Look at look at this. It looks like a hive of bees. It's just all of these like little asteroids and planetoids that are just like buzzing around this thing, just trying to get in there. Or yeah, I, I believe that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> Venus and Mercury, everything is just like they're on their way. They did change their mind, I believe. Mercury, did are you so far out that you just do not care anymore? <laughs> Mercury does not care. Oh, it's it's got Pluto with a colored belt. Oh, that ain't right, sir. That ain't right. Pluto. I saw Saris was around here. Saris is like um Okay. I I feel like this is one of those stupid space things that I would have said before on my channel. Oh, no. 1995 I started 3D88. No, I loved that one. Okay. Um <laughs> I like how it just missed. You see that and it like spun around. Gravity is so weird. Um, oh, I have a hand. No, I'm trying to okay move because I want to get to center over there because the whole thing is moving. What if I wait a minute? Can I move stuff? I don't know what's going on here. Oh, dude, I can move stuff right now. Live act while it's live. I'm like gonna start scooting it around change its angle to something wonky <laughs> I'm gonna manually put it back where I want it and here comes Neptune okay um Neptune's probably gonna miss now just anyway I just wanted to see these arches because that's it's so interesting how this works oh oh change your mind Neptune you change your mind change your mind Wong. change your mind change your mind <laughs> all right anyway <laughs> I find this so so much more interesting than it probably looks. <laughs> oh, oh, it already looks like a fun game just to just to screw around. In. It does, and we haven't even really done much. Um, but anyway, minor <laughs> stupid history lesson. Um, so back in the day, and by I mean like way back in the day, people are looking through these telescope things, and they're like, "Hey, I totally spotted a new planet. It's between." Mars and Jupiter. We named it Ceres. Well, we found out later that Ceres isn't technically qualifying to be a planet, though it kind of looks like one. And it's actually just the largest piece of what was the asteroid belt that was basically undiscovered at that point. So then we called it the asteroid belt. Very similarly, much later, 
people are looking through their telescopes and go, hey, I found a new planet. It's out there after Neptune. Looks just like a planet, though technically later we find, well, it's not exactly everything that would apply to a planet. Neptune is still just having a field day out there. Um, and uh, we called it Pluto. Thing is, very similarly, we found out, no, it's actually just another sort of asteroid belt that Pluto is just the largest one of. And that is the Kuiper Belt. Oh, wait, did we just freaking lose Neptune? Neptune! There's no way. Yeah, he's coming back. He's d yeah, they'll make his mind. They always come back. Um, so, Pluto and Ceres are very, very similar. Like, if you think Pluto's a planet, Ceres is as well. So don't give me none of that. Pluto's not a planet. Yep, Neptune's changing, changing her mind. She's coming back. I knew she'd come back. Had, had to... Had to entice her properly. I love how like this is my, my plant, like my stars, super weird irregular orbit. It's like playing snake or something in in space. See this? <laughs> oh jeez. I'm playing snake with a star. It's not even like a small star. This thing's huge. Mercury, did you care? Like come back here, y'all. Whoa. I could just demand decrease, Mercury's attention. All right, here we go. Mercury, you back? Come on back now, Mercury. Bonk, there you go. You do your little dance. You're, you're, kind, of, you're kind of coming. I think you're... Where are you going the other way still? Mercury, you you high, Mercury. You high. You know what? You know what? I'm, I'm going to stop dealing with you, okay? I'm going to stop freaking dealing with you. I'm live. Hey, look. Make, make. Make make. I'm not familiar with whatever make make is. <laughs> <laughs> and you were supposed to be an expert on space. Dude, there's a lot of freaking space. <laughs> there's That's so no much. <laughs> oh, Pluto's still coming. Man, I'm I'm never going to move past this one part of the tutorial where it's like, hey, let's delete the sun and make it bigger. No, I'm gonna be like, dude, destroying planets. <laughs> all right, anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. That's all it is. All right, so introduction part two. Regal was too big for our solar system. The planets didn't have enough velocity to orbit such a massive star. Turns out the sun is a good match for us. Well, yeah, you think? Well, I mean, to be fair, the sun is only a good match for us by billions of years of trial and error. I mean, think about it. There's a lot of other crap that has been flung through our solar system and just got devoured by our sun and just didn't happen to hit the right, you know, miss the sun by just enough with just enough speed to safely orbit it. And even still, most of it was just lots of debris. So think of like the asteroid belt, you know, for another example. Eventually, that will kind of consolidate if the sun didn't, you know, get large enough and swallow it up eventually. Just pretend the sun doesn't change size for a moment here. It will eventually kind of consolidate all that stuff into another planet. So that's sort of like where that stuff is all coming from. But what if Earth were closer to the sun? Um, well, I mean, if you increased the... Ooh, God. You'd have to increase a lot of stuff if you were gonna... Ooh, try and safely make that happen. Here is an Earth that is orbiting much closer to the sun than it should be. To see Earth's temperature, look at its properties. Click on an object to select it. Hey, Earth! How you doing there? I know this planet. It's one of it's one of my favorite planets. Probably is my favorite planet, <laughs> considering it's the only one that I won't die if I'm on. All right, here's the summary of the selected object's properties. Earth, one Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys know that Earth is one, one Earth big? One Earth. Well, Earth uh, is one uh, Earth. It also has the diameter of one Earth. <laughs> Um, oh, oh, no. the temperature is rapidly increasing, just the longer it stays here. By the way, it's in Celsius, and I am an idiot American, so, um, yeah. What's that in Fahrenheit? <laughs> it looks freaking hot in Fahrenheit already, so I'm assuming that is like, like, uh, oh, I'm gonna guess like 300 degrees instead of 150 Celsius. Um, I know it's substantial. Either way, the Earth is a freaking oven right now. Um, we need to back that puppy off. 
Uh, for a list of editable properties, click the panel. Oh, I can edit this crap? Dude, we can edit this crap. We're not naming nah. it Earth anymore. That's a stupid name. Now we're calling it Buzzy Winkle. <laughs> All right, now. The it mass of Buzzy Winkle. I got that Earth is now forever Buzzy Winkle. The Earth of Bu well, I mean, this is basically God Simulator. Let's let's not kid ourselves. Um, the mass I mean, of Buzzy Winkle is actually ten times the normal size of Buzzy Winkle. There goes Buzzy Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> it actually says Buzzy Winkle. I'm so happy. Let's make you super <laughs> tiny little Buzzy Winkle. Is Buzzy Winkle tiny or is Buzzy Winkle huge? I don't know. Buzzy Winkle's <laughs> super tiny. Nah, Buzzy Winkle's massive. Buzzy Winkle's a big boy. We all want to make Buzzy Winkle very huge. Okay, Buzzy Winkle is like basically one and a half Jupiters. <laughs> That's how big Buzzy Winkle is. Uh, the radius of Buzzy Winkle, however, is only um, about four Earths. That ain't right. The density, oh lord. Yeah, we're gonna have everything in metric, aren't we? Calculated radius, uh, sure. I don't freaking care. Uh, do, do your little dance, man. Uh, average surface temperature. Can we change this to, hey, awesome, I can go Fahrenheit. Yeah, I thought so. We're in a freaking oven. It is now, wait for it. 666 degrees. <laughs> Welcome to Buzzy Winkle. The, the age. Hmm. What, what are G years? Is it just, uh... I mean, like, here. Measuring time in space is gonna be pretty much impossible. Like, as, as soon as, say... Well, aside from, like, relativity being a huge problem, say if we had people colonizing Mars their time is passing differently than ours is on Earth versus even, like, the International Space Station. Um, so, having proper yeah. time, it's gonna be crazy. That's why, um, in space, typically they use, um, I don't think, no, they speak with Houston, but I think they use, uh, oh gosh, where, where was the time that they use? I thought it was, um, could be wrong, but I thought it was in Florida. Where they where they lift off could be wrong because they change it all the time I think depending on where they're from but I just know it, the time is not based on Houston though they talk with Houston so anyway uh, but yeah t t calculating time is gonna be like pretty much impossible because like the only reason that we're able to tell time here is because everyone has one thing that is constant for us and that is the Earth consistently going around the Sun at the same speed which as soon as we start leaving, now we can't tell time anymore. <laughs> well, I don't know how we're supposed to fix this. Um, because you can't even do it relative to some other thing that we can all see. Because relativity is a problem. And all of a sudden, like, we're going to see something happen from Earth at a different time than someone else. You can't even have, like, a consistent clock because the clock will tick differently. Yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> mini space-time rant um age oh it's such a youngin it's in i'm assuming um so age how long has this object existed in the simulation we uh will use known age if the object is a known object in the universe um okay so it's interesting it seems to be safely orbiting in the same path right here so we're fine um surface gravity 33 buzzy winkles that's a lot of buzzy winkle if you just even that's tried to come near this bad boy yeah that, that is a lot. We might want to try and yoink that guy back down a bit. Actually, let's... I can see I, I'm multiplying its mass multiple times. Now I get it. Um, we even have it as like nine Earths right now, and that's a little much. Um, let's actually double this. So now we basically have it about, about two Earths. So thing is, if the Earth is twice its size, its surface gravity is about five times Earth. I'm assuming that is also because of the speed at which we need to be moving in order to orbit the sun this closely. Um, because like the speed also has a lot to do with it and not just like the density or the size of the object. Um, distance to you. To me. I am everywhere. I am omnipotent. What's a you? Okay. All right, sure. AU is astronomical units. Ah, uh, thank you. I'm 
I'm really tired today. I wasn't even planning on streaming. I, I, took, a, I took a general astronomy class and even I knew that. <laughs> and I haven't, actually. Um, thing is, I am real. I'm just so tired today. If you can't tell, like, I, I have been... God. Run from, like, so many different extra shifts and things I was never planning on doing. And working during all of this nonsense in retail is horrible. And, um... Oh, God. I don't want to talk about it. So I'm really tired. Aside from the fact that I, I'm like insomniac enough, um, I was supposed to be filming my episode for this week, um, this morning. Uh, certain things went wrong and I can't do it. So I gotta wait a while. Um, so I just kind of sat down and was like, okay, I'm doing this now, I guess. <laughs> Which is fine because I felt really bad. These, these devs gave me this. They were like, here, you should play this. And I was like, I should. And then I didn't get a chance for like three weeks. <laughs> So I'm really sorry about that. Um, motion! All the motion. Um, replace object. Ooh. Let's swap. Let's swap out Buzzy Winkle with Uranus. <laughs> 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 wow, oh, it's actually properly there. orbiting. Yeah. So I'm, I guess it like automatically detects what um, scale it needs to be. Or, or maybe like velocity in order to properly orbit at this speed. It's probably the velocity. Anyway. Ah, ironically, it is 66.6 uh, .6 kilometers per second. Outstanding. I mean, yeah, that, that bad boy's whipping around there, but at the same time, we are uh, still... We're going days per second down here, if you see that, so... It's going pretty darn fast. Um, so, uh, you can use the multipliers or drag the slider. Uh, temperatures are rising fast. Set it to a more comfortable 20 degrees Celsius. I, uh, I'm not Kelvin Fahrenheit. Um, we're going to set it to a more temperate. Um, is so it the earth like 71? I, I'm, I think. Well, that eh, didn't last long. I tried. 71, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I change it and it just goes like immediately cooks itself. Um, I, I'm trying. Okay, it, it, it is demanding that I do Celsius. And there it goes. Back right up to. Is this what you wanted? You wanted to laugh in my face? Here, you're 71 degrees and you're gonna live with it, okay? I'm gonna pause you, pause your butt, because you are 71 degrees and you're happy about it, okay? That's how happy you are. There. Did it, did it, is it happy now? Do we, do we break our little test? Because, because it's not Earth. Oh, that might have done. Uh, we have to change it back to Buzzy Winkle. Where's motion, uh, replace object. Um, it's definitely Earth. I wasn't screwing with this. Um, okay, that made it cooler for a little bit. There we go, okay. But temperatures are still rising because it's so close to the sun. There we go, now. What have I just done? <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Oh Lord, it takes time to heat up the earth with boiling its oceans. What just happened? Okay, we're fine. The sun was having a bit of a conniption no fit there. Anything. Did you see it? <laughs> okay. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Too fast! Oh, the... oh, it, oh I think it god, forced. No. I think it forced a pause. Um, so, God, it was like it's like two black holes orbiting each other. Oh my god! Oh, you know god. that two black holes can orbit each other so fast that it actually causes an actual ripple in space time that we can detect called gravitational waves. Like, actual oh space, God. time, space, and time together are stretched as if, like, you, you, I don't know, threw, like, an apple in a still swimming pool and you saw, like, the ripples go out of it. Like that, but in all directions, and it's stretching and compressing space and time at the same time. Going out. That's, that's what it does when they ring together that fast because they're, like, orbiting each other so quickly, it's, it's crazy. All right, takes time to heat up the earth and start boiling its, boiling its oceans, even this close to the sun, so we'll speed up the simulation so you don't have to wait too long. If you say so, take a closer look at the earth. It's not earth, I just wanted to change its name to Buzzy Winkle. Focus on the earth, click it again. 
I did. What do you mean? Zoom in? What? I'm clicking on it. Hey. Hey, you. Earth. Coming to you. Whoa. Hey. Oh. Oh. That doesn't look so good. Are you doing okay, Earth? You don't look so hot right now, honestly. Um. That's, that's, um, that looks like you're cooking. That, like, oh, that's fire. Okay, well, it's fine. That's just Australia. Um, I mean, the place is already burning. Even now. The place is just on fire. Hey, hey, California is still cooking in here, and it's, it's not literally cooking. So that's, that's a step in the right direction. I mean, we're this close to the sun, and it's still not, oh, man. Oh, God, that place is just flaming down there. Yeah, India's starting to go too. We gotta, we gotta fix this. To focus the camera, click it again. I, I cannot possibly be missing the Earth from this distance, and I'm trying to click on Buzzy Winkle. Maybe it meant this. I don't know. I like. Oh, motion. I really want to screw with this stuff, but at the same time, like, I don't know what the tutorial wants me to do here. Did does it think that I'm not? There's a random squad fam lurking. Is he now? Nah, he no, he's quiet. He, he's 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 not here. Maybe he is. Maybe Ma he oh. <laughs> 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 Mr. Squid. Oh my god! I'm pounded on by big men. It is time to fix India. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm I'm trying to save India. Yeah. Um. Actually, uh. The uh, United States just seems very green, which is weird for how close to the sun we are. And considering that the ocean is completely dried up, the Earth is quite green. Um, and uh, and this is yep. what happens. You're wondering why no supreme omnipotent deity is able to fix any problems on Earth when they go awry, because this is basically the interface they're using, and they're like, wait a minute, but I thought I clicked on it. I gotta click on Earth again? But everything's going wrong. There's this there's this pandemic going around. What the heck am I supposed to do? And you click on it like, I gotta call IT. And then you're like, oh god, I don't wanna. And then he like boots up Netflix for a few millennia, and there that's that's how we get in this situation. <laughs> it's like that meme where the dog is in a burning house and he's like, oh everything's fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> I mean, oh, right now, Earth us. is that burning house, and uh, I would focus the camera, click it again. What does that mean? What's it? The Earth? I have been clicking the Earth, my man. What do you mean, game? I just want to destroy stuff. Maybe I... click the Earth at the, at the top right of the screen. Yeah, I, I can spin that ball all day. I don't know what it wants me to do. Um, appearance, yes. Um, atmospheric color, cloud color. This is, we're gonna have pink clouds. Oh, wow, yeah. We totally have pink clouds now. All right, that mattered, that mattered. Let's turn off the city lights. Eh, well, I mean, since it's set to on, at least this time, everyone's dead. Wait, it, are they dead? Well, the sun's over there, so th why are we being lit from this side? Excuse me? Why are we lit from all sides? Is there another star around here I don't know about? Oh, you. Oh, you. There he is. Earth, you filthy cheater. You dirty little <laughs> skank. I guess you got me. <laughs> You're being lit from two sides. <laughs> In all seriousness, what on earth am I supposed to be doing? Uh, I get, I get it. You made a joke. You, you, you did the joke. You did the funnies. I did the funnies. Said, the funnies. He were... did the funnies. I, I, the... I got the funnies. I did. You them. thought you were gonna sneakily put it there, but I got it. I, I got the funny. <laughs> all right surface there in front materials. Of me. Oh God. So these are just the surface materials. Oh Lord, that's what the Earth looks like right now. This is just the atmosphere. <laughs> why uh, oh why do we have candy floss clouds? <laughs> We're gone. Yeah, can candy floss clouds is awesome. <laughs> the, earth, <laughs> the earth is an old moldy jawbreaker. 
<laughs> Snow? Alex has been in charge of the Earth for less than 10 minutes and he already turned to clouds pink. <laughs> you, you mean Buzzy Winkle? <laughs> Buzzy, uh, sorry. Buzzy Winkle. <laughs> Buzzy Winkle. I can't fix it. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. I'm getting bored by a big fat man. Who's the big fat man? I don't know. He's called Abomination. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna let is, that... Is Abomination as in Marvel's Abomination? No. Oh. I, I wish. How am I supposed to move? Okay, space pauses. I wanna move! Like... Can I waz that way? Oh, I can waz that way! Uh, I'd like to put in a personal request to name a planet, uh, Bowongle. Bowongle? Bowongle. Bo oh, oh, now it worked! God, what ha what did I do? What did I do differently? <laughs> what did- <laughs> My god powers <laughs> need their own IT department. <laughs> I, I think- I think you just did what you were doing before, but just with a little more pizzazz. More, really? I- I- I, I, I did it that time as if I knew what I was doing. After 60 years of orbiting this closely to the sun, the high temperatures have caused the Earth's oceans to boil away. Without water, Earth can no longer support life. Fortunately, in reality, Earth is already in the perfect position. Perfect? I mean, you, you never really call anything perfect. The the problem we're gonna run into is that um, we are slowly gonna fall into the sun because the sun only gets bigger. <laughs> so there isn't ever a perfect position. For now there is, for your lifespan, yes, that's fine. But um, we, we're all gonna get cooked eventually. The second Earth oh, is orbiting at its actual distance from the sun. It is in what's known as the sun's habitable zone. It's called the Goldilocks zone. The Goldilocks region. It's the Goldilocks. We both knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Sea stars habitable zone. Turn on habitable in view settings. Oh. Sun. Set set view. Oh, view. I can see. Habitable. If you don't blow up the moon at least once during this playthrough, I'm going to be severely disappointed. It's okay. I will definitely blow up as many things as I can, like the entire galaxy. They're only letting us mess with the solar system right now. So as soon as we get to big stuff, oh, it's going to get, it's, it's on. The green area represents the sun's habitable zone. The zone shows where the temperature is just right for liquid water on a rocky planet like Earth. In the red zone, temperatures are too high. And in the blue zone, temperatures are too cold. You said Earth was in the perfect zone, and we're actually, like, just on the cusp of boiling, according to your model here, so just wanted to point that out. Um, look at Earth's temperature. It's perfect for liquid water. What time is it? Um, it's negative 26 degrees. Are you, you... You're joking, right? You're joking? That's your Gosh. average surface temperature? Oh, game. You are Whoa! the doof. There we go. We, uh, we spinning. Yeah, all right, because we, we have about spin. three days per second. <laughs> there we go. We're doing backflips. Uh, don't you just hate it when Earth does backflips? Um, so I believe Uranus um, does backflips through the solar system because it's axis. You can see Earth's axis right now pretty clearly of how tilted it is. Um, Uranus is basically a 90 degree angle, so it's actually <laughs> doing backflips. I just I thought you were spinning. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I let me, ride. <laughs> if it makes you happy, let's do one day per second. Slow that bad boy down a bit. It's a day per second. All right, look at Earth's temperature. It's perfect for liquid water. No, it's not, you maniac. Our planet may be in the right place to allow life to thrive, but small changes can still have a massive impact on our climate. We've learned this using the scientific method of process that involves... We know what that is! We're in the frickin' third grade. 
Nah, the game no, thinks we're stupid. The game thinks we're stupid. What kind of moron wants to buy a game like this, too? You know, this is the only person I would think would be interested in a game like this is someone who is actually intelligent enough to go like, wow, I want to see visualizations of these crazy celestial bodies, like, mashing into each other. And that was not an intro <laughs> for a porn, because I just kind of heard what I said. It's already a thing. <laughs> I, ma I made it. I made space horny. <laughs> space porn? Space porn. Yeah. The movie. This is the same method that is allowed for technological advances that we now take for granted, like smartphones, internet, modern medicine. To be fair, yes, but most of those things were to fit needs. And like smartphones, for example, we needed the ability to minimize the size of our computers because we were putting them into space and things, the heavier things are, the more they cost to bring into space, and it's just, it's unbearable. So, basically our think tanks were building smaller and smaller computers till eventually they could fit in our pockets. What is it, phone? Oh, yeah, I had somebody <laughs> commenting on uh, next week's um, playing with myself whiteboard art. I already have it. I just drew it right before I started this, by the way, because I thought I was gonna film today. Yeah, anyway. Um, it has allowed us to explore the depths of space. Uh, well, I mean, we try. We, we send, like, bucket of bolts, like, floating stuff out there, like Voyager, and we're like, Good luck, buddy! <laughs> <laughs> you can do it! You got this! <laughs> Continue on the last part of the introduction to explore simulations of astronomical missions and discoveries. Like, one of the inter most interesting things I think that Voyager has done, um, look up, there is an audio file because it's always been like listening to stuff and sending it back to us. It recorded and play, we played back and fast forward, the sound of Voyager escaping our solar system. Because like there's this kind of like a halo aura of, because the, there is a vacuum and then between systems, there's some deeper vacuum that we don't even further understand yet. And it's passing between those things, and it sounds so weird. Anyway, there's that. Your explanation made it sound weird. Holy crap. Yeah. Continue on the last part of the introduction to explore simulations of astronomical missions and discoveries. Cool. If you want to skip right to the experimenting on your own, select home. I want to see all the guides you have set up, even though they're quirky and not quite working right. Whoa. Introduction part three. Using what we learned from science, we're able to accomplish the seemingly impossible. And what's the, oh man. Hey, it's Voyager 97. We launched the Voyager spacecraft to explore the gas giant Jupiter, who's basically what it's for, but we're like, hey, it's still cooking. Keep that sucker flowing. What's oh, cooking, God. Jupy? Hey, Jupy, Jupy. Jupy, Jupy has, um, a, uh, Jupy Senpai. <laughs> Jupy Senpai. <laughs> Jupy Senpai has, has all these moons. Oh, Io. Io's a cool one. Oh, look at Callisto. Oh, oh, Jupiter Senpai is getting so close. Oh, it was looking at me with its big red eye. Oh, I'm blushing. Oh, God, this physically hurts. Oh, <laughs> uh, there it goes. But, man, we practically hit Io. Uh, Voyager continues its mission right? today as it journeys into interstellar <laughs> space, carrying a golden record of the sounds of the Earth. Didn't, uh, yes, and it's actually kind of frightening. People are a little upset about that. <laughs> They're like, you basically just put, like, this hot track of a bunch of information of us, where we are, and what we're like, and you just put it out there. I've heard analogies people have made, like, it's like, um, a baby screaming and crying for help when it just woke up in the middle of a jungle. You have literally no idea what's out there. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but no, we were... Ugh. We've made mistakes. Yeah, we discovered potentially habitable planets. We discovered potentially habitable planets farther away than we can imagine. Here in the Trappist-1 system, more than 40 light years away from us, we've observed five planets that are similar in size to Earth. Size means pretty much nothing. Um, it, it's mostly like, well, I mean, not pretty much nothing. It really matters of like the orbiting speed, like we were saying, 
and like it's it's day to night cycle as long as it's evenly I mean, heated and it's size distance does from its sun. Size does matter if you're looking at if we can habit these planets because if the gravity is too different from Earth. Right, right. Well, there's some where the they're bigger but their gravity is lower. It it's based on the a lot of it's like the speed, the density. Um, also, if it is <clears throat> a uh, what's the word? Um, it's a buy something star unit where they have two stars uh, orbiting uh, each other. It's binary, a bi binary, binary, bi a binary. Oh, yeah. yeah, you have a if you have a binary um, solar system, then all of a sudden it might, might change things too. Like a smaller planet might have higher gravity. I don't. It's wonky. I'd have to honestly screw around with this for a long time before I got some numbers right. This is one of the three that orbit the red dwarf star's habitable zone. And right now, somewhere on this small planet, a small team is busy building a universe simulator that makes it easy to launch a moon at the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> launch the moon at the Earth. <laughs> Do it. It was trying for a moment there. It was like, yeah, space. And now it's just like, blow up the Earth. <laughs> okay, oh. now it, all it said was a uh, moon. All right, fine. We'll launch the moon. So, select moons. I already did. I already made the damn thing. What? Okay, I'm going to make what another one. Want from me, game? We now have two moons. Me. How many moons would you like? Many. All of them. Oh, God. This All is... of them. Our tides will go crazy. <laughs> I just made four moons. How about five? Just for good measure. All right, now. um, mm, Select moons. How about Europa? Here, just... Because it's like, it's not... Or Enceladus. Enceladus! Where is that one? There it is! It's Saturn's Oh, it's a little baby. I'm gonna... Boop. There you go. There you go, Enceladus. You go, little marble, rolling through space. Now, what's the deal here? Oh, God! Oh, God! <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. We just lost South America. Most <laughs> of Latin America. <laughs> Oh, hold on, did we... Casually lose this entire oh, continent. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. It's going, God. Did we blow up uh, some on the other side, too? No, that was just, like... Whatever was blasted in the atmosphere... Oh, it's even taking the oh, its own shrapnel God. and orbiting around itself. That's so cool. You think this is just, like, a particle right. effect, but it's not. It's actually, like, all of its own crap of like the destroyed moon flying around here oh imagine, very cool imagine feeling that on the other side of the world oh you would you would feel that because <laughs> you know here like i've heard this crazy description of um what oh dude those two moons we made actually just collided into each other and became one giant super moon just saying <laughs> it happened oh, he just slapped Earth across the face. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and now it's like, dude. I've heard this um, amazing description of... Um, oh, let's wait till that bad boy hits. Um, what it actually would have been like... Or what would have happened when um, the uh, asteroid that struck um, the Earth 65 million years ago... Uh-oh. We got, we got a couple bad boys. You're coming in. For landing, you near miss. Oh, it, we got a scratch. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, that's what I'm trying to tell you. But we are like impact for a couple of these guys. Oh, you're so hidden. Fragment. They <laughs> landed too. They just get named Fragment. All right. I love how that that continues to orbit and then like it frays off a bunch of clutter. Awesome. Um. So, anyway. This object would have been moving so fast and would have been so hot that as soon as it struck Earth, because like the atmosphere would have been baking this bad boy. Oh shoot, we have another collision out here. Yes, the atmosphere baking it so much so that once it hit the Earth, oh, we got another blast. It would actually tunnel into the Earth by not only striking the Earth, and turning it into a liquid, but it actually turns it into a gas so quickly that it doesn't stop moving. It just keeps tunneling into the earth, making this giant hole, but the gas has to go somewhere, 
and it rockets straight up. So kind of like how you see the rest of this stuff like blasting out away from the earth. <clears throat> Imagine like a giant geyser. It's, it's not the meteor coming in that you really had to worry about. It's all the crap that just got shot up. Now that yeah. shoots into the atmosphere Imagine. and freezes and all starts falling back down because you can see all of this orbiting around here. Now we have multiple moons. It's obviously screwing with it, but that eventually freezes and starts falling back down. And now everywhere around the planet, fire is raining down. <laughs> oh, we got another. Yeah, imagine just drinking your morning coffee and just, just vaporizing. You know, I one thing that, that would have been that's... really cool, though, if you were really close to where that thing first shot through into the Earth, it would have been going so fast. If you were close enough and you saw where it came through, you could look straight through the hole, assuming it was daytime, which it, uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't, I mean, I don't know if it was I'm day. I'm pretty sure the, the core of the Earth would light up anyways. <laughs> well... I mean, for at least for a fraction of a second. Wow, God, there goes this guy. At least for a fraction of a second. This is not going well down here. Um, you would be able to see straight through broad daylight into night. You would see stars through the hole that this just barreled through the atmosphere. Because nothing would be there at all. It would just be straight up vacuum. So you would see straight into space in the middle of daylight. That would be insane. <laughs> I'm sure whatever uh, sauropods, you know, are chilling that they're like, Oh, dude! <gasps> Look at <laughs> that! Dude. And then they burned this alive. Is freaky dude. Freaky dude, <laughs> dude! So, oh. I, I need tools. Do you think dinosaurs were hippies? <laughs> Obviously. Select moons. Why is this? Oh, Her this! Herbivores are different. I'll be right back. Now select an add, aim, and fire. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> whoa, whoa. Oh, I actually, um. Oh! Here you can ask really big what if questions that you couldn't answer in real life. Like, what if the sun disappeared? Or what if the earth was too hot? Or what if the moon came hurtling towards us? I don't know, but those moons. They're having a bit of a cosmic orgy out there, and it is hot. Like, nice. they are blowing It is literally up. hot. <laughs> it is hot. Like, they're, they're making... Well, I mean, you have these things that are moving really freaking fast. I mean, we don't... It doesn't look like it's moving fast because of our relative distance to it, and we're just kind of spinning with it, but they are screaming through space. If anything touches them like this like it's really really hard to land on an object in space because of how fast it's moving that's why like even little pebbles are so dangerous to the iss or anything in space just because of how fast they're moving it doesn't matter if it's a tiny little pebble if that thing is moving miles per second it's extremely dangerous so i don't know where that one moon was that we shot we were supposed to aim that bad boy at the sun but uh Anyway. Oh, 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 we got a near miss. Oh, that was so close. I'm gonna I'm gonna help nudge it along. Can we? Give him a little nudge. Ah well, we'll finish the tutorial. Oh, that actually did finish the tutorial. Oh dear. Or even what if the Milky Way collided with the Andromeda galaxy? Universe oh. Sandbox, you create destroy Oh, here they go. Oh jeez. I'm gonna waz in here a little bit. Oh god, there's so much going on right now. Good lord, oh they're gonna like god. blast into each other. Cause you basically have black holes inside there attaching the whole thing together and now they're all responding to their own physics. Oh god, there's so much going on. Oh, and it's gonna like Splash together. Like, I can't think of any other word other than splash, because that's what they do. In Universe Sandbox, you create, destroy, and explore on a scale you've never before imagined. It's it's one last thing while these galaxies collide. Click home. 
A home is the starting point for everything in Universe Sandbox Click Guides. If you ever want to learn more about using Universe Sandbox, just select a topic here. That is very helpful. I appreciate <laughs> knowing that that's a thing because I'm an idiot. Open existing simulation. You got these, huh? Dude, I like that. Here you'll find simulations like the ones we just saw, plus many, many more. We hope you'll enjoy exploring and experimenting in Universe Sandbox. So, if we go in close enough into what's going on here, we would basically see the black holes orbiting, like I was telling you. Good God. We want to mess with some black holes, don't we? Let's finish. Oh man, where do we even start? Like, where do we start? Uh, how do I get back to zooming again? Uh, whoa, um, yeah, I don't need to. Oh, I am zooming. That's just how far away it is. Oh God, it still knows that this was, what am I grabbing, Andromeda? We're just grabbing, casually grab Andromeda. <laughs> um, closest approach to the sun, Comet Neowise in 2020. Oh, dude, yeah, let's check that out. Does that just happen? Did you guys get to see that, by the way? Well, uh, squad's on mute right uh, now, but. Oh, here it comes. Man, that thing's got such an insane path. We really did not have a lot of time to see that bad boy. There he goes. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, on or uh, using this picture. Okay, so. So I was using it for New Earth object. Discover who's in Okay, so I really appreciate that this is being updated. That's what I was wondering. Like, so they're constantly constantly just adding new stuff to this because Neowise was a recent thing that like had just blown by <sighs> March can you remember March 2020 yeah. I remember I watched that thing without a mask on and it was nice <laughs> oh dear yeah, actually, there was um one night, I believe, I, I was trying to see it and the ISS in the same night. It, they happened to both be passing over. Um, so, yeah, very, very cool. And there there it goes. Let's see what else is in here. Is this, like, just recent stuff? Um, oh, Asteroid 2018 VP and uh, 2020. Um, we need to just start with generic solar system and start screwing with stuff. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Our solar system is home to eight planets, four terrestrial inner planets, and four uh, giant outer planets. The asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter and the trans-Neptunian objects beyond Neptune. It's called the Kuiper Belt. It's called the Kuiper Belt. Um, during other large objects include Ceres in the asteroid belt. <clears throat> Pluto, beyond the orbit of Neptune. It's called the Kuiper Belt. We have a word for this. And... Sedna on a distant and eccentric orbit. I'm actually not familiar with that one. Now, here we are. Are we, uh, we're, hmm, about, about a day? Oh my God. Mercury is just screaming through the universe. So we're about <laughs> a day a second <clears throat> right now, <clears throat> Earth Day. I gotta get some water here. Ugh. God. Okay. I swear I can do this. Now, what would be the best thing to just like boop, put in here? <clears throat> Another question like, I can only assume the rest of this out there is just a skybox. It has to be. There is just too much. Too freaking much. Though you can actually like look in all directions and actually see where the rest of the galaxy is. I don't know if you guys have ever had the opportunity, like on a really dark night, somewhere away from a city, and you look up and actually get to see the rest of the Milky Way. It's really cool. It's gotta be like the right time to, like time of year to see different parts of it. Um, but yeah, no, typically like you'll see like that chunk. I've seen this a lot. And then sometimes you don't see anything. Just because it's it's there, it's just, you know, all in a different direction. 
Um, so anyway. Uh, I have seen it. It's really cool. No, oh, it's really cool. So we realized, like, we're, we're kind of, like, um, uh, not quite on the outer edge of it, um, but um, <clears throat> far enough away that we're not really close to the center at all. Let's do tools. We're going to add... <clears throat> Let's see. Um, first off, we have all. Let's not do all. We have stars, planets, moons, minor, objects. Objects? Why would I add objects? And then there was a baseball that I threw at the sun. <laughs> Seriously, what, where'd my baseball go? Why did I throw a baseball? A baseball! <laughs> baseball! Baseball! Okay, so we have baseballs careening into the sun. They're, they're going to pass by our camera in a moment here, I think. I don't know if I even did that correctly. Whatever. So, there they go. There's my baseballs. <laughs> All three going at once. I'm going to strike the sun out in one fell swoop. We have some galaxies that I could just toss into the mix, which I don't know how that would even work. Black holes. Yeah. <laughs> this might have to happen. Okay, so uh, Sagittarius A, black hole, one solar mass. Okay, you know what? Why don't we try pausing? Just out of curiosity, what we're going to do is we are going to remove the sun and in its place put a black hole of one solar mass and just start screwing with it. So... I want to I want to delete how do I go to delete stuff again? Is that just tools or maybe I go to this guy? Yeah, there we go. Here we go. Sun, sun. I gotta say, <laughs> it's time for you to die. Uh, <laughs> oh, just replace object. Right, I could do that. I could just do it in one go. Black hole, one solar mass. Replace. Goodbye world. Okay, now play. <laughs> What's going on? I want to get rid of the rest of this. I don't need to see this. Hey. Hey. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. How do I make it go away? There we I make it go away. Okay. So, our baseballs, I kind of wish we could just get rid of now. But, so, so far, that itty-bitty little guy is going to be equally equivalent to to what the sun was. So the only thing we've lost is heat. So now we screw with it. Can I click on you? Where are you? Where, I'm going to select you again. It's like so hard to select a black hole. <laughs> Guess that's part of the problem. Oh, God. Yeah, it's just very itty bitty. Yes, it's ex well, it's it's I don't know if itty bitty is even the correct thing to say it's it's like it's it's folded in on itself it's actually moving oh my god where is it is it actually so weak it's attracted to other planets gravitational pull there it is yeah 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 all right fine you, you gotta stop moving you've lost your permission to move we're coming in there. We're coming in there. Where are you, you little stall? Oh my god, it's so tiny. There it is. Oh lord. That is something I would never want to approach. You see this? We're nearing the event horizon where it's like literally warping light around us. All right, now. <clears throat> what I wanted was to mess with this guy. Here we are. Now. I'm going to try and zoom back out. I'm wasting it. Yeah, you saw that? Oh, I, I see it, the event it's horizon. It's so nice. Jesus. Now, mass. I'm going to start increasing this. <laughs> Very slightly. Two times. And uh, Mercury is already like... <gasps> senpai? Black hole senpai? <laughs> <laughs> But we could make things more intense. Four times. All right, now Mercury's kind of freaking the heck out. 
Okay, there we go. Yep. Yep, we, we done screwed this up. And it is still the same speed. I want to make sure we were getting used to that. So it's basically a day per second. Almost a day per second. A little slower than that. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, <clears throat> Mercury. <laughs> Freaking Mercury's just in there. Actually, uh, based on the timing that when I did this, Earth just did a near miss. But, curious, looking at Earth, it is freezing. Because <laughs> we kind of just destroyed the sun and replaced it. Yeah. So, Earth is on this really weird orbit right now. Trying to catch up. Mercury, however, no, no, no. So, you know what? I don't think that's big enough. Let's make it bigger. All right, now Mercury is like, oh God. <laughs> it's, oh man, so is Venus. Bigger, I say! <laughs> Are they all like, yeah, they're all weirdly on the same plane as they orbit too, which is really strange. Anyway, so, so far nothing has actually been swallowed yet so in that regard I guess they're okay oh we have so much space debris that's like getting sucked around this thing too we're gonna be close by when we see anything that actually gets like completely destroyed the odds of them actually hitting it sometimes soon is mercury actually cool with this <laughs> Oh, and there's the baseball. <laughs> Mercury's cool with this. We're gonna speed up. Yeah, Mercury's just like, eh, this is fine, man. Bigger. Bigger. Oh, God. Oh, my. Oh, they're gone. Okay, so they, they're gone. <laughs> oh, jeez. We just this. lost, uh... Something else we just lost. What's that? Oh God, Mercury! What the heck is that white line? <laughs> Look at the oh, oh God! I don't know what this white line is, but it's something that. Oh, oh it's the baseball! <laughs> it's the freaking baseball! Why did I make a baseball? <laughs> oh my God, who's still alive? We have Mars. Mars is cool. This is fine. We have. A black hole that is 64 times the mass of our sun. Mars is like, eh, this is cool, man. There's no way you're just fine with this. There's several things that are orbiting just fine. Earth is not one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just super compressed and then deleted. We're gonna make this bad boy. So huge! Whoa, there goes Mars! <laughs> you see that? God, the way everything just orbits it so fast. Yeah. Oh my god, Mars just got annihilated. This thing is now huge. It's like 1300 um, uh, solar masses. Oh my god, all that debris. Did you see that thing just blow? Saturn is it's still just cool with this. completely annihilated and it just got flung out. Bigger. Another ten times. It is so huge right now. Everything. Oh, I see, because they, they were being flung away. Oh, I see, that's what happened. So, it, we made it so big, by the time Jupiter and Saturn and all them came in, we actually rocketed them so far away by the velocity of them falling in that now it's going to take a while for them to even make it back. So, we're going faster! Faster! Seriously? Saturn? You coming, my boy? Alright, um... So... I guess that's just the way that it's going to be. We're going to zoom into this black hole that we've made now. Yeah, that it's pretty big now. Um, you can tell because like the size of it, based on how large it is, you will actually see the nothing through it. Oh lord! 
Oh, that is the most uncomfortable thing. If you fall into a black hole... They, well, they actually have a word for this. It's spaghettification. Because, oh uh... God. It's gravity is so intense that it actually increases so fast as you're falling. Say you're falling feet first, okay? And you got your, your arms up, right? Because you're falling. Ah! So... Oh my god! <laughs> your, your legs are going to start falling faster than your torso. So much so that it will rip you in half so that your legs can continue falling faster. Oh my god, you see the stuff that's whipping around it, too? So anyway, then the same thing will keep so happening. So then your, your waist down, <laughs> then your knees will rip, then your ankles will rip, and it just keeps splitting and splitting and splitting because it's tearing you in faster and faster that until eventually your atoms can't even hold you together anymore. That's how strong these are. They're, I mean, they gotta be—they gotta be strong enough that they're actually gonna power, you know, the orbiting of an entire galaxy. These things are nuts. So Saturn, are, are you ever? Nah, we got Juno coming in though. We got—we got some friends who are gonna join the party in a bit. But geez. Oh well, we got another huge fragment that just went for a. A spin oh god yeah this would be the most uncomfortable thing if you were hurtling towards if, somewhere in space and all of a sudden you saw this weird distortion <laughs> I'm sorry but you're probably about to feel the most painful death imaginable spaghettification and now you know that all right wow something near miss <laughs> you see how fast it was moving and it just boom. There it goes. Oh my god, are you content with this? It's on an orbit path? You gotta be kidding me. Alright, let's load up something else. God, dude. The 100 year anniversary of the eclipse that um, validated general relativity. Oh. Just the Milky Way in general and just send something hurtling into it. Um. Hmm. I think. Ultimate engineered uh, solar system, Alpha Centauri's triple system. Ooh. Planets between the Earth and the Moon. Meaning, what? Solar system planet comparison. Oh, that's kind of neat. Okay. Solar system planet comparison. Our solar system is home to eight planets, four terrestrial inner planets. Can I send something careening straight through all of them? <laughs> <laughs> This one is set like like um um Sephiroth's big attack in Final Fantasy 7 where he basically says <laughs> I don't know what the heck he does. He just sends this meteor through like every planet, crashes into the earth and forces the earth like an inch away from the sun and that is his attack. It is his normal attack. <laughs> that's that's too much power. The game is so absurd. Um, a solar system of eight planets, four blah, 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 planets that line up here in order for distance to the sun. Uh, and the large end of the scale is Jupiter. The, uh, yeah. Oh, Pluto is on here? Oh, you dirty, dirty cheater. No, Pluto should not be on here. Can I delete Pluto? It's a planet to for, me, uh, damn it. It totally <laughs> isn't. So, uh, for consistency's sake, I'm deleting Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself out of here. You ain't no planet. Delete object. All right, now. Now. Wasn't it reclassified as a planet? What? Wasn't it just reclassified as a planet, or is it still a dwarf no, planet? No, it no, it wasn't. Okay, so here. We have a goal. <laughs> and that goal is... Blow stuff up. Perfectly in order so that we can destroy all of them in one go, like bowling. <laughs> okay, do, here's the question though. Do we start from the small planet side or the big planet side? Mm, let's go small first. I don't know. I think I kind of want to see like the big debris from the big ones smother the little ones. 
Because if we go with the small ones first, whatever I send through there is just gonna destroy immediately. Let's try this. I'm gonna I'm gonna set it up. Okay, so it's a simulate. Uh, fragment collide. Enable collisions. Oh well, abso freaking lootly. Tools, we definitely need, wait, pulse. Launch a ring or sphere of particles at a set velocity from the selected object. Fireworks, launch a firework from the selected object that explodes into colorful particles. There's so much to do in this. Explode? <laughs> Explode the selected object. Mm. Laser? Shoot a laser with set power and wavelength. Yes. Please. <gasps> You are the Death Star. <laughs> oh, I was here. Not quite what I was trying to. To do, well, it looks or... like it's about to blow up if you keep shooting at it. I don't know, because it's it's not set to play. Now it's playing with no time. Oh, can I not mess with this one? Give me give me like uh a uh, hundred minutes per second. There. Is anything happening? It's my laser of doom. But, or we can just watch what happens if we let the planets exist this close to each other. I come back just in time to see Alex torching a Oh lord, yep, a this, is, this is happening. Um, I don't want the laser anymore. Now I just want to see whatever I just did. Oh, they're, they're just being torched is all. I, I had to go grocery shopping real quick. That's what you done did. That was quick. Fly. Wait a minute. Fly to the selected object. Pulse. We're destroying stuff at this point. Um, add an object. Okay, so... Launch an object was an option before, and I kind of want to take something. Launch it so fast. Hmm. Let's see, what are we going to launch at them? I'm surprised you haven't drawn a smiley face on a planet yet. <laughs> I was going to <laughs> draw other things and then I decided oh. I, sh I really should. Oh yeah, yeah. sure, because we um, totally didn't see that. Launch, oh yes, launch. We're going to launch, hmm. Hmm. Moons. Boom! Wait, what? Why aren't you moving, Moon? Moon? Boom, 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 All right, so I made like a bajillion moons. Now, we'll watch them careen into it, right? Moons, where did everything go? Where did everything go? What? Where did everything go? <laughs> Alex, did you, use, did you lose the solar system again? I, I lost the solar system. <laughs> uh, total solar eclipse. Bombardment of the moon. Okay. Bombardment of the moon. Yeah, take it, moon. <laughs> take it. Oh god. <laughs> Get like the moon you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Destroying this thing. So hold on. I guess there was a set amount of stuff that's coming in to destroy it. Or just like to help form it. Oof, yikes. There's been some theories that the moon is actually um, a chunk of the Earth after the Earth had been much bigger, yeah. collided with something, a huge chunk of it came loose and basically started orbiting itself. Yikes. The moon's cool, it's fine. 
Who is cool, man? Uh, Jupiter's fly around the sun. Alright, that makes sense. Um, asteroid, uh, volatile test, planet volatile test. Earth oh at 1,000 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Earth at 10,000 degrees Celsius. Oh god, 100,000. One million. What on earth are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> You're turning it into a sun. <laughs> Uh, locked still earths rotating half radius one radius we'll do we'll do one I want to see this whoa wait what locked still earths in the simulation two earths are placed next to each other at a distance equal to their radius and held in place the side of each earth that is closest to the other uh, earth experiences a large gravitational attraction from the so oh my god it just sucked it in <laughs> Because the Earths are so close to each other, the difference between oh those God. forces is large. And each Earth stretches towards the other due to its tidal force. Each Earth is heated by tidal forces, and one is eventually ripped apart, leaving its fragments orbit uh, and collide with the other Earth. Ah, choose these. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, dude look at this. <laughs> this just slurped it up. Yeah, it, it just slurped it up. Look at that, that right there, that's Earth 2. Earth 1, Earth, Earth 2. two. Ooh, you should make like a uh, Hunger Games with planets. See? <laughs> <laughs> the last remaining planet gets to consume the remains of the, uh, its fallen brethren. Okay, here's how we're gonna do it. So we're going cool. to replace these two Earths. Um, so first, we're gonna have Earth in one corner! And in the other corner, we have... I don't know, what do we have? What's going to fight Earth? Venus! Earth! In use. The battle to end all battles. Earth versus Venus! Go! Oh god, here they go. <laughs> oh, they're, they're eyeing the each other. They're like, yeah, what you gonna do? The What's way you're you narrating it, it's like they're gonna enter a rap battle. <laughs> <laughs> they still might. They still might. We have any bets? <laughs> we taking any bets? Who's going to overcome the other? Is it I'm the gonna, terrestrial terror? What? I'm gonna put my bets on Earth. The I'm terrestrial terror? Okay, so... This just looks like they're dancing. They kinda are... Okay, guys, how do they do the hold them in place thing? The fun thing about this game is it's really easy to make a Yo Mama joke. <laughs> right, that's what makes it fun. <laughs> exactly. That's, because that's Mama definitely it. Okay, um, so we need to find a way to hold them in place. Motion. Uh, rotational, period, speed. Oh, that's it for motion. Um, what if I... S can I set motion? Well... I feel like it's just gonna do its thing. Um, it had to have been a, a checkbox. Oh, here, motion. Um, rotational period, tidally lock, um, tidal effects. I mean, we don't want it tidally locked. They'll never fight if they're tidally locked. We need blood! Um, huh. I'm. Not position lock. Here it is. Okay, so Venus, here we are. Your time to shine. Motion. We're going all the way down. It's down to the bottom. I think. Yeah, position lock on. Here we go. Now. Fight. Okay, well they were they were doing it before. You know what? We gotta we gotta edge this on a little bit. We gotta, we gotta get them started. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna scoot them just a little bit. Just a wee Make bit. one of them call the Whoa, others. Whoa, there they go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a winner. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it just, oh man, Earth just turned into a big Slurpee. <laughs> 
<laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers, you didn't see it yet. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you see all I did? I barely touched it. I was like, it turned into a gigantic slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> and now Venus is even hotter. Oh my god. Oh, Alright, let's. Cameron has a thing for Venus, apparently. Venus can never get hotter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Venus, you sexy beast. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now we uh, need to do the true battle of giants Saturn! But we need to back up so we can actually place this bad boy properly. <laughs> and we're gonna do versus Jupiter tools. We're gonna add a Jupiter. A little too close. But we're gonna do it anyway. Now, before we get ready on that, we gotta make sure we lock them in place. Now, Saturn, I know you're I know you're excited and all. Now you're looking at that, you're eyeing down that Jupiter down there like, I can I can take them. We know you probably can and all, but gotta make sure you're not going anywhere first. You feel me? Alright. So Saturn has an advantage because it has a shield. I don't know how how deep this is gonna go with all that stuff, but trying to, meant to break because like there's a lot of things that really should also be taken into account but like how do you truly simulate all of it without you know having a universe all right so here we go whoa <laughs> well maybe a bit of an unfair advantage there jupiter just got careened by some sort of uh object i think it was whatever the remains of our our past entrants who have failed so Jupiter, uh, you gotta you gotta do a little scootsies here. First off, we're gonna get you up higher. You should make a planet tree way. Should I? We're getting closer. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Can I start launching stuff at it? We need. We have a heavyweight champion who needs to be defeated. Um, <laughs> Jupiter just turns everything into a slushy. <laughs> or explode. Boom! <laughs> that was just unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Jupiter's too strong. Oh god! <laughs> I want to see. Um, let's do. <laughs> <laughs> explode. Just explode. <laughs> You it just, just blew, blew up, up Saturn and sucked it in. Earth at 500 degrees is uh, five times the boiling point of water. Heat the Earth to this temperature, and its water will begin to boil away. Meanwhile, the Earth cools as its heat is lost in space. Yep, that would definitely suck. Let's... Yeah, imagine just drinking a glass of water and it evaporates. How about Earth at one that... million degrees Celsius? Oh god, it's gone. One million degrees Celsius is the temperature of the sun's corona. Heat the Earth to this temperature and it will vaporize completely, leaving only rapidly cooling an exploding cloud of escaping gas and plasma, as this radiation pressure far outweighs the force of the Earth's gravity. <laughs> I would think so. Um... Supernova, the sun, in the solar system. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Whoa, crap! <laughs> oh, God. Our sun will never experience a supernova due to its low mass. It will eventually evolve into a red giant and a white dwarf. However, in this simulation, a supernova is triggered in the sun, sending an ex... I got... Oh, God. It's very pretty, but um, I believe we're all dead. Um... Triggering and suspending cloud of gas outwards into the solar system. This cloud reaches the Earth within an hour of the supernova. <laughs> within six hours, it has reached the orbit of Jupiter, and within 24 hours, the cloud is expanding into the outer reaches of the solar system. Uh, yeah. Um, that was a big oh, boom. Big that boom. was a big boom. Here's what we're gonna do instead. I'm gonna reload that. Is the, is the big bang? Ooh, ooh, 
We gotta do that. Okay, here's here's the thing. I want to slow this down. Well, we got the supernova again, but I'm gonna slow this down so much. Half that speed, half it again. Um, oof, maybe even again. All right, now. Oh my god, it's still going so fast. That's minutes per second. Ten minutes per second. Five, two, three minutes. Half a minute per second. About a point three. Okay, a little more than that. Oh my god. So this is the point where we would actually be seeing this. Like, gonna go to Earth. Here we go. I wanna make sure we can see this from here. Our, Our sun blew up. <laughs> <laughs> Our whole existence just disintegrates in a flash. And here it comes. It's coming, all right. Oh, God. <laughs> here, come, here comes the sun. <laughs> in the worst part, it's like everybody on the other side would be like, Whoa! and then everyone else what? is just sleeping and like, What's going on? <laughs> we can't is it see. Just for you or is it getting hot in here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Turn god. Turn the AC on. Turn it up. <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> All right, let's speed it up a bit. Junk. Junk, 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 junk. There we go. Whoa, god, and Earth is gone. <laughs> Earth is gone. <laughs> Yeah, that um, <laughs> that swallowed us all kinds of fast. I'm having so much fun with that, this. Earth exploding and close that. moon. Heck yes. Supernova, the sun. I still haven't seen the stuff. moon blow up yet. Apparently that was a thing. Supernova type L A La. What's that mean? I want to see that. Um. Oh, guys, this is the implosion. Occurs when, y whoa, yep, when a white dwarf star orbiting in a binary system with another star either merges with a white dwarf companion or ex uh, uh, creates enough mass from its own companion star that the white dwarf's mass crosses the Chandreskar limit? I'm not familiar with that one. About 1.44 times the mass of the sun in this simulation. The star Sirius B... That creates nearby material until its mass exceeds this limit, triggering a supernova. That was, uh, that was pretty cool. But, I mean, we all gotta see. Earth exploding <laughs> and close moon. In the simulation, uh, the moon circles the Earth in a very close orbit. 30 minutes into the simulation, the Earth explodes. Sending fragments in all directions, the moon's surface is heated as it collides with some of the fragments without the Earth's gravity to maintain its orbit. The moon flies off to space in a straight line. Why would... Would, like... I'm trying to process that. Is Was it, like, the Earth exploding part of the scripted triggering, or was it actually the simulation where... Due to the moon being so close to us and orbiting so quickly to cause that to happen, it was actually tearing the Earth apart. I think that's what happened. <laughs> that's nuts. <laughs> I need more. Uh, exploding Jupiter. Well, we already saw that. We blew it up. Sun and exploding Jupiter. It got better. <laughs> Um, in the simulation, <laughs> Jupiter circles the sun on a very close orbit. 30 minutes into the simulation, Jupiter explodes, sending fragments in all directions. These fragments continue to orbit the sun until they get all slurpy derpied. Oh, jeez. The thing is, even that distance is insane. That's what's left of Jupiter! See ya, buddy! Hi, no! The sun's got its own little ring here. Even though the sun has multiple rings. Um, Earth exploding and eight Ceres. Why eight Ceres? Okay. Why not? Whoa! Oh, okay. In the Earth is orbited by eight copies of the dwarf planet Ceres. 30 minutes in the simulation, the Earth explodes, sending fragments in all directions. Each Ceres is heated as fragments of the Earth strike their surfaces without the Earth's gravity to maintain. Ceres flies off into space in a straight line. You can actually kind of see, like the directions that they would all go in based on even a 
perfect normal orbit, just to kind of show where that would launch you. Um, Earth exploding in real time. This is how we're all going to die, ladies and Joe. Ladies and Joe. Ladies and Joe. Oh, ladies Don't and forget Joe. about Joe. Who's Joe? What even happened? In the simulation, that's, the moon circles the Earth on its normal happen. orbit. Two seconds in the simulation, the Earth explodes, sending fragments in all directions in real time. Uh-huh. Simulation speed of one second per second. It takes over 12 hours for these fragments to reach the moon. Really? I mean, because I guess we all, like, want to imagine that it's like Star Wars explosions, you know, where they just boom, and they just, like, go everywhere all at once. Um, but yikes. I mean, you gotta consider how much mass this is, and how much force is gonna be required to push it all away from itself. The moon's surface is heated as it collides with some of the fragments. Without the Earth's gravity to maintain its orbit, the moon flies off into space in a straight line. Oh god, here it goes. I can actually start seeing some of it. You can kind of see some of its sections here starting to fly off into space. So let's speed it up just a little bit. 1.5. We'll go uh, about 5 here. Whoa! Here we are. We got we got some action. Yikes. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't wanna live wouldn't wanna live there. Yeah. yeah looks bad. That's yeah, some bad news right there. Some I'm noticing like some of the textures like kinda line up weird here, but I mean I don't know how else you even create such a simulator to begin with, so I find it interesting nonetheless. Oh god, you can see through it, it's like it's boiling. Oh no, it's cause the whole thing's bursting. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. So here's the thing, this is still like almost real time. The This is the Earth bursting in real time, so it needs to fight against itself. It'd probably keep falling back in too, and then I don't know if it's re-exploding or what. I'm, you know what? Um, I'm gonna give you guys a second just to soak in and enjoy this one. I'm going to run to the restroom really quick, so... I will be yes, right back. Yes, let us soak in all our deaths. Yes, all of your deaths. Just enjoy them for <laughs> just a moment. Enjoy, enjoy our enjoy our deaths. <laughs> oh man. Now I'm imagining the, the the song from Spongebob, the best day ever song, best over, day a ever, planet yeah. over a planet exploding. It's the best day ever. It's like, that's like a post-movie episode too, isn't it? I think so. And it's not that good. I was but a tiny whelp when I saw it, so... Oh god. We don't look like we're doing so hot in there. Oh, I think we're doing he get it. He very, did another funny. I think I think we're I think we're doing very hot. Thank you. I think you. we're doing very hot. There's all kinds of hot that we're doing right now. Yeah. Hey, squad. You, the, you are you this up. pebble. And uh Cameron, you are this pebble. Aww. And I am hey. this pebble. And now we wait. And they will all converge. Oh! And then they blow big, up. Big ol' group hug. <laughs> but then we blew up. And then we blew oh, up. That's the best part. Oh, jeez. This. At least we all died. Happy family. Oh my God! So there's still oh. chunks of the planet that are still there. Boy, there's a lot of stuff. 
I, I kind of want to just like look out to a random blotch and go, I want to go there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> Once I get bored, yes. <laughs> We're going to switch um, Earth Exploding and 8 Saris. Uh, we did that one exploding in real time. Supernova this... close up, real time. Ooh, Is yes. this what, would it, what it would yeah. be like to become a type 3 civilization? You just go around in random solar system and blow everything up. <laughs> and that's up. why I'm scared. <laughs> Due to its low mass, it will eventually evolve into a red giant and then a white dwarf. However, the simulation of supernova is triggered in the sun setting on an explosion of gas onwards. The simulation speed is Ooh, one glass. second per second. This is a supernova in real time. Thing is, um, I guess this is just us watching, like, I don't know from where. So, it's kind of hard to, like, gauge what we're even looking at. Would there even be a way to escape uh, an incoming supernova, or is it just coming too fast? Uh, I don't think it's... E you'd have to have known it was happening, like, way before it happened, gotten way out of there, and even still, I don't think you could. You gotta be Not so far away from it. Like, that's another one of those things that, like, we can tell when a supernova happened by, like, that... It causes another ripple, just because it's so powerful. So I don't know. But I'm pretty sure we can predict when a supernova we can, is gonna go down. We can guess. Yeah. We can guess. We, well, some of them we know. Some stars we know are going to supernova, but that's got nothing to do with like the fact that um some um oh god some of them we just can't tell when they're gonna do it. We just know that they're gonna do it. All right, you want to see it faster? Let's speed that bad boy up. Oh, yikes. How did they even, like, build this? Like, I can see some of the shortcuts they were doing with, like, making flat, um, like, PNG textures coming out in kind of in just random directions, simulated directions. But the thing is, based on any amount of time that we want to spend watching something... And look, it's like auto-generating in different sides just to show... I mean, imagine your PC trying to render an entire universe exploding at mm -hmm. once. Oh my god. We're basic. We're gonna make it do that eventually. Oh, we are gonna make it. Let's see. Uh, we have solar system, non-moons, uh, solar system, all possible dwarf planets, solar system, major moons, solar system, planets and moons. Um... Voyager 1, Jupiter. I think we saw that one. Works five pieces. Uh, Lands of Ice and Fire. Halley's Comet in 86. Uh, planet Grid. Uh, planet Composition Triangle. Jupiter in between suns. Earth in between suns. Uh oh. Oh god. Ooh, I want to see the sun strip Earth apart. <laughs> like two dogs on a singular sausage. That's are the Earths specific, orbiting? The... <laughs> no, the sun is orbiting. The suns are orbiting the Earth. The what? Earth is just jittering. It's like, doesn't know where to go. So, that is possible. If basically you had like a binary system because here i'm gonna zoom out the sun's doing this this happens a lot actually like some of the brighter stars you see in the night sky are actually binary systems and they're two stars orbiting each other it's theoretically possible you have something in the center of that point of gravity that they're making that's just so strange but it being like a habitable planet oh heck no <laughs> Unless they or were like at a perfect distance apart, could you imagine? You should make two... It's always daytime. <laughs> uh, you should make two big suns collide. My God, yes. Um, Jupiter in between suns. Let me see what happens with this one. Oh God. Um. Well, they both first consumed their own Jupiter, because why not? Can Jupiter's delicious. I mean, I'd eat Jupiter. <laughs> yeah. 
Just a big old ball of gas. My favorite. Just like me. <laughs> and then, oh, and Jupiter's, then picking Jupiter's picking a favorite! Jupiter's picking a favorite! And thunk! <laughs> oh god, too much mass! Too much mass! Too much mass! Oh, this is gonna change things. Come on now. Come on, sun. We have a battle of the suns. There's still crap floating out there. Clash of the Titans. Here they go. Is it is it falling in? Oh my god! <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> saw Jupiter I'm collide with that over here. You're getting <laughs> it's just made it bigger. I don't know why it got that much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much mass. One of right. my favorite stars is Vega. Do something with Vega. If I can, if I can find them, I'm I'm sure they're all here. Yeah, I saw it uh, earlier on. I just really want them to just just smack each other already. But it looks like they're on a safe orbit, so we gotta fix this. Move them closer. These are hours per second. That's it. Oh, these things are screaming around each other. You realize how close these are? Bruh. These are hours Bruh. per second? <laughs> yes, when everything is dying in the universe, <laughs> the only thing you can hear is bruh. <laughs> Here we go. All the echoes and in the universe. let her happen. Oh, oh God. Whoa, whoa, dude. dude I'll just, be right back. Just what? They're trying to eat each other. Oh no, we picked it. We have a dominant star now. No. Come on, you're coming back. You're coming back in. And that was. Oh, oh here, we, here we go. Come on. Moment of truth. <laughs> it's a rave. God, they are <laughs> just eating each other. It's like a freaking rave in here. <laughs> yeah, um. I would love to see a star battle. Oh, man. Star fight. Come on. Boom! Oh, crap! <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I am zooming back. Oh god! You zoom back so far. It's just I can't go farther than that. <laughs> Look what we've done! Oh my god! Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, that's a collective, that's a collective bra of everyone who just. <laughs> Who had all their faith in God, and he just decided to take a royal dump on it. I want to do this planet grid, and we're going to turn... Oh, this is so strange. We're going to turn physics on. <laughs> Alright. Wait, it's on? They're not locked. Are they all locked in place? Oh, can I, can I not select multiples? Or turn one of them into having physics like you. You have been chosen. Oh my god. Your motion will suddenly be activated. You Come on. You are the chosen one. You are the chosen one. Move, buddy! Are you gonna go somewhere? Maybe? No? I mean, we're only on minutes per second, so... It's just sitting there. It's cool with this. Alright, maybe, maybe this, this one was just set up so things don't blow up. Um, many stars collapsing momentum test. Peekaboo. Oh god. Squad, you you missed a huge, huge, huge explosion. No. Oh my god, now what? This is just called collapsing momentum test. Um, I don't know exactly what that means. I'd like to do some tests too where we like take some really really dangerous things and put them like right next to earth or just put them in our solar system and see what happens like replace our sun with like um 
I don't know. At, at first, I was like, okay, the black hole with a single solar mass, just so that the gravity stays the same and see what happens. But of course, everything you know, just I, freezes. I'd really like to see. I mean, it's probably like a pain to code or something, but what would happen in our scale? Like, you would be able to see a house, and what would happen to it if the Earth just blew up? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, or this is simulating all drinking. the fragments and all that. I don't think it could possibly get that close. Oh, yeah, look but... at this. What even happened to this? Mars? What happened to you? Earth is massive, so do you think that maybe a house would remain intact on one of the fragments? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I if you had that I'm... kind of force that seriously oh. blew up the Earth... That, that kind of force is absurd. Oh, we got another... Oh, no, we don't. Near miss. This is actually a really neat um, just collision test that they set up. So many things are just... Oh, here we go. We got some more. Exploding everywhere. Um, now, many stars. Uh, excuse... Did they make a star system out of stars? Oh, well, yeah, that's because that's why it's called a star system. No. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, like, this is... This is a... There's, like, nine stars in here. Oh, God, they're totally gonna... They're gonna blow up. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way this is sustainable. We'll speed this up. Oh, man. They're... Yeah, we lost several. Oh, well. They're just kind of, like, dancing through space. This is fine. I might have to head out to eat soon. Cause Tum Tums do a grumble. You're gonna miss me destroying the universe. I'm saving that for last. <laughs> Aww. I know oh, wait, there's. You're gonna end the stream soon? Uh, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm just kind of looking around and messing with whatever is left in here. Uh, tidal that, evolution that eccentricity. Cause we have like around. a good third more to explore through here, and I'm I'm jumping to the ones that I think look really interesting. Um. Tidal evolution test to uh, launch it. Oh, man, there's so many of these. I hope they have more of those um, little explanations of some of these things. It's like, is this just a test to see, like, uh, Jupiter? It looks like it's tidally locked with the sun. No, I can't tell. It looked it, but it's not. Yeah, it's just getting superheated. <laughs> um... Oh, so you can just jump to certain planets. Uranus and its moons, Saturn and its moons. That's kind of neat. Potentially hazardous asteroids. Um, oh, there goes Wolf. Oh, God, there's so many of these. Uh, Kepler 10. Kepler 32. Oh, God, they have so many of these. This is so neat. Largest known planetary system. Human-sized objects. What? Variety of human created objects, real and imagined, lined up in order of size for comparison. Okay. Uh, why would you do this? What? <laughs> this is so weird. This is so weird. So, two sided dice is marble. Okay, a force size is a bunch of dice. There's a golf ball. Pool balls. We need every pool ball, apparently. Every pool ball is the same size, but thanks for pointing that out. Uh, tennis balls, baseballs, bananas. I guess they're just trying to show, like, toilet paper roll? Wait, what? <laughs> We're gonna wipe the universe clean one Who's seat at a one time. Of these things is, you see a bunch of balls and then it's just banana. One of these things is not like the Bowling other. Bowling ball. Why? What? I don't understand. Baseball doesn't look right. No. Well, something looks really. I don't know what the heck this is supposed to be. We have a teapot. Um, soccer ball, basketball, a pumpkin. 
which is the same as a jack o' lantern. Here's a bunch of jack o' lanterns. <laughs> um, the pigeon. Hi, pigeon. Should probably back up. Now we got some bigger stuff. Watermelon. A sledgehammer. A long sword. Um, a, <laughs> a mirror. A tetrahedron. Oh, I see. Oh, God. Did you need to. A monolith. <laughs> It's a space odyssey. The Phantom Zone. <laughs> it's, it's the dev team. That's awesome. Uh, New Horizons. Oh, didn't they just recently... Oh, God. Wasn't it... Yeah, no, no. That was a couple years ago, I think. Wasn't New Horizons? No, I'm... This is their new one. I forget their... their the named ones. They, they recently... Oh, like curiosity was gone and then they started new horizons am i getting this right and of course a man-made object is a police box <laughs> um parker solar probe uh the tesla roadster um oh god some more spacecraft so we're getting bigger and bigger one's voyager and uh voyager 2 Third stage, oh, Saturn V, yeah. I've seen a Saturn V, actually. There's uh, there's pictures of me and Kim, like, beneath the one in uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It's really cool. Uh, the Juno Ooh. spacecraft. Is that a sperm whale? I didn't need sperm whales. In it's a sperm whale. I did not need sperm whales in this game. <laughs> Space whales. Space whale. I hate them. I hate them. I... Oh my god. They're that big. It's the pyramids, for some reason. Yes. Great Pyramid of Giza. That's insanely huge. Okay, that is huge. Yeah, uh. Whale. I'd like to get around behind it, but it's hard to. I'm trying to select this so I can orbit. Rotate, move. Can I can I go somewhere? Now nah, I gotta go uh, at the okay. same pace. A random pyramid of Giza is right there. Can I go? What happens if I clip through something with my camera? Granted, remember we're like the size of dice, so maybe that's why that looks obscenely huge. I think we're the size of dice. I can't tell. Uh, a rival spacecraft. I'll be right back. Wait a minute, that's that's some sci-fi thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's some that's some that's some sci-fi thing. I, I feel like I've seen that. Um God, what was that movie? Um Yeah, I re oh God I forget. I totally forget. What was it called? Um I watched it, where, wherever the crap it was. I just can't remember what it was called for the life of me. Um, yeah, the human side of that's just strange. Dice Swarm, orbiting bowling ball. Now they're just getting strange. Um, Earth and close moon. I wanna see um, Earth and 75 orbiting moons with upward motion. Galaxy cluster, yum, yes. <laughs> Oh, nice. You can do also do save and loads, too. Galaxy clusters consist of hundreds to thousands of galaxies that are gravitationally bound to each other. This simulation includes only a handful of galaxies randomly arranged near each other in space. Oh, God. And here's the thing. Like, all those little puffs you see, those are clusters of solar systems. They're all lights of different stars, and they're all just trying to deal with each other's gravity as they're all being blasted away. They're all like little, these little galaxies and things are just, God, they're like not even formed anymore. Wow. And yeah, you you definitely don't want, um, definitely don't want these things colliding. Though I'm pretty sure, just to scare you all, Milky Way and Andromeda are set to collide um, I don't remember when, but it's oh, obviously like super, super distant future. Like the sun is already going to be gone by then. But 
like billions of years from now I think. right but they're actually set to collide like this is gonna happen to them wow i'm surprised just, like just how a lot of it died out so quickly um earth and eight Ceres, earth and eccentric moon black hole and sun black hole and so oh god what in the simulation, the sun orbits a black hole that is 10,000 times more massive than itself. The sun's orbit is very erratic and takes it within the black hole's um, roach limit. At this point, the tidal forces on the sun become strong enough to rip it apart. Some of the material that used to be the sun continues to orbit the black hole while the rest is thrown out into space. This entire system, the black hole and the sun's eccentric orbit, will fit inside the orbit of Mercury in our solar system. Yikes. I don't even see its uh its orbiting point unless I am orbiting it now. Oh, there it is, yep. Oh my god. Yeah, you can see the whole thing from here. Oh wow. It actually heats the sun up as it passes by it. Oh I'm sure it does. That black hole has so much more mass than the sun does, even though, it, like, what's so weird is you don't see it, but it's because the space is, like, it, it, there's no other way to describe it other than it is so big that light is kind of concealing it by overlapping itself, and the mass then is so huge that it just tears into things. Because, I mean, eventually, oh god, that sun's starting to get really destroyed. Eventually, you can't just get, like, you know, a, a giant... Say you got, like, a giant rock floating in space. The giant rock just attracts other rocks, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you multiply this by billions of years. Eventually, they, they sometimes just get so ludicrously huge that they can actually do this. Well, they'll, they'll cave in on themselves just on their own gravity. They're, they're still there, but, you know, we can't even send any probe there or do anything that could ever possibly make it through the spaghettification process and come back. Not even a signal, not even light gets away from it, which is why you actually see this, that through it. Oh, that looks so weird. Oh God, you can actually see it now. Yeah, I zoomed in and you could see the star globularly like going through it. I'm gonna try and line it up perfectly, see what happens. Ugh. Yeah, yikes! Wow, jeez. Mm -hmm. Black, don't I don't. Those things are freaky, man. Earth and exploding moon. What happens to the Earth if the moon explodes? Oh God! In this simulation, the moon circles the Earth at a very close orbit. Thirty minutes in the simulation, the moon explodes, sending some fragments spiraling into the Earth's surface, while others fly off into space. Oh, well, I hope you don't live anywhere near the equator, looks like. Or honestly, on Earth. Hopefully you don't live on Earth at this point, because uh, you probably are like super mega screwed at this point. Oh, God. Wow. I am so sorry, Africa. You basically don't <laughs> exist now. Oh. Lord, yeah, the uh, moon takes no prisoners. That is actual apocalypse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, fire is literally encircling the planet right now. <laughs> We're all dead. At least uh, everyone who's been hit is all dead. Oh, oh, yes. It's honestly... They got it the best, because they at least died quickly. Everyone else is now going to burn. Aside from, like, I have no idea what's going to go on with our own tide. Because, you know, the sun does affect our tide, just very subtly. It's it's a little distant. Like, anything that is, you know, strong enough gravity is going to affect our tide. But the moon's obviously the closest one right now, so it tends to do the most, because it's moving more than the sun comparatively right so 
in terms of the earth so i mean it's it's affecting it a lot more but once you got something like this all this nonsense we have no idea what's going on assuming you even survived say you were some someone who lived like down here in uh chile or something then phew, you're still living with this, this spiraling fire <laughs> i don't know how you could possibly <laughs> earth and 75 orbiting moons with upward motion oh dude what Earth and 75... Okay, um, in the simulation, 75 moons are placed around Earth. The moons interact gravitationally with each other and with the Earth. Moons that pass close to the Earth are torn apart by tidal forces. Others collide with each other or crash into the Earth's surface. And uh, the moon... I'm sorry, the Earth is actually going straight up this whole time. So they're all going to try and orbit the Earth. Let's speed it up a little. This is what it looks like when the, when the Earth is the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It can't be because the Earth's still still moving. And even still, I, I remember hearing this point before. Like, how would you ever know that you have stopped moving? Ever. You know? Is it ever possible to be still? Oh, boom! Earth just got careened. Yeah, we're dead now. That was one shot. The moon just landed into it. Or rather, one of these moons did. I don't know who our winner was. Oh, God. They're all just, like, blasting into each other. Everything is just blasting into each other. <laughs> Spiral oh, galaxy. God. Oh, there goes another one. Oh, God. Well, we're all oh, dead. I, I love watching like this. Like, where stuff gets really close but doesn't quite make it and it's just, like, orbiting around it. That's really cool. I want to see the spiral galaxy. Astronomers classify galaxies by shape into three broad categories, spiral, elliptical, and irregular. Spiral galaxies like our own Milky Way are shaped like flat disks with a number of, zoom in a bit, number of curving arms extending from a central bulge of stars, gas, and dust. Spiral galaxies rotate, and the unexpected rotation speeds of the stars at the outer edges of the spiral galaxies led on astronomers to predict the existence of dark matter. You can basically predict, like, where there should be mass, or rather, where there shouldn't be mass, but there seems to be. Um, so yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, this is just weird. I want to see this from a different angle. Dude. I mean, you got to imagine, each one of those is a system. And it's so strange, too. Like, what happens if you're like, you are this one? You know? What happens? Like, or if you're here, and you're getting, like, shot off, are you, like, pulled back in to the spiral? And then what happens when you get too close here? Obviously, this is, like, yeah, this is millions of years per second, too. So, obviously, we're not flashing this quickly. It's just to give you an idea of what the momentum looks like. But, yeah. and for the record, I'm pretty sure in terms of the Milky Way, we're somewhere, like, way out here-ish. This, this, we're, like, I'm pretty sure we're out in one of the sides. Um, but even still, just, like, follow one little point. Just kind of watch where that goes, like, this little cluster here. You're just going to see, like, they, they're safe for a long while, but obviously there's a lot of chaos in the middle. And the real problem, oh, it's actually not letting me get closer, was when um, you get to the center, then you see something that actually might be getting way too close to the black hole in the middle that's causing all of this to happen. Um, which would, you know, the same thing I was saying before about like the the giant black holes you get one that's like so ludicrously huge it starts pulling on everything and the more stuff that runs into it it gets bigger and it can pull on everything and it makes the entire galaxy bigger because now it has more pull that's just insane that one thing one thing is making all this happen one it's just crazy i mean they're all affecting each other too but they're all being pulled in by that one spot uh, we have an elliptical galaxy. Let's check this one out. Astronomers classify galaxies by shape into three broad categories, spiral, elliptical, and irregular. Unlike spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies range in shape from flat to spherical. An E2 elliptical galaxy is shaped like a slightly flattened sphere. 
wonder what slightly flattened sphere means. Um, oh, 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 so kind of like, uh, um, how do you, just, uh, I don't know how to describe it in any other way. I guess they did a, did a, they did a job. This one's wow. just kind of doing its thing. But yeah, I would, uh, I wonder how, oh, these are just nebulas, just yoinking around it. Now this is chaos. That's absolute chaos in there. This looks chaotic. Yeah, uh, we'll be grateful that we're at least in the, um, well, I mean, to be fair, the uh, Mickey Way also looks pretty chaotic, but I don't know, like, where's the rhyme or reason in this? It's just, like, it's almost like this is still kind of forming, but it can't be because we would have known that that was just doing its thing. Ring of Galaxies. What on earth could this do? Simulation shows seven galaxies arranged in a ring. And we know what that means. Alex is going to mess with them. So he's going to take Galaxy 3 here. And put him over there. Right here. All right, there we go. It's just enough. I'm trying to forget it. There we go. Oh, good lord. Now let's see if they actually get big enough to start sucking in all the others. They do. Oh my gosh, I have so much of that just gets sent away. Because <laughs> remember what happened when we had like the black hole near um, too many other things? Yeah, they're, they're gonna, all going to collide. Basically, like, the fort, like how we, in our first experiment, we lost a lot of the bigger planets because the force was so... What was that beep? Was that you? Uh, my, my air conditioning. Oh. The force was so strong, it actually sent them around the black hole and rocketed them away. Oh, wow. So it's actually, so you can see what happened here. There was too much at once and it actually blasted everything all away. But the thing is, if we speed it up eventually, if it's, if it, it's gonna be working properly, those black holes should be out there and they should, you can kind of see, <coughs> reform. might take like billions of years but oh there they go they naturally reform though eventually <laughs> <laughs> i mean like we're we're zoomed out so far i kind of lost where i was but um galaxy cluster oh that's safe Yeah, galaxy clusters consist of hundreds to thousands of galaxies that are gravitationally bound to each other, and they're destroying each other. Now in millions of years per second. Do we live in a cluster? Yeah, but here, that's why I kind of wanted to slow this down. Oh, whoa. The local cluster, I believe. So here, so take a look at this. I have this now slowed down substantially. Now it looks safe. But the thing is, it's not. This is two colliding galaxies. Um, this simulation includes only a handful of galaxies randomly arranged near each other in space. So we can still have some near each other. Like this one still, you can still tell it's a spiral galaxy. It's just also being sucked into whatever these, well, oh, there's up to seven. Yeah, there's a bunch in here that we're doing all sorts of nonsense, all sorts of, uh, NSFW stuff. If you know what I mean from the galaxy standpoint. Oh, Lord. Okay. Yep. Now you know that. Nomad, uh, book. Huh. What? We'll go check on my dog real quick. Is this what I think it is? Uh, in Nomad, a uh, novel by Matthew Marther, a rogue black hole passes through the solar system, threatening life on Earth. Yeah, I'm, I've heard of this. Oh, God. Yep. So this is just a single solar mass passing through our solar system. And it's in about hours per second, too. So if we saw any reaction to that, then uh, that would have been catastrophic, okay? We seem to be all right, but it was hours per second. Let's see if that affected anything. Speed you guys back up. Yep, that affected some stuff. So Venus in particular got a really big jolt. Ooh. 
Oh yeah, that's not good. That screwed stuff up. Yeah, we uh, we definitely can't have that happening. At this point, everyone on Earth should be frozen, I think. Let's take a look at this. Um, God, I need freaking Fahrenheit, man. Yes, everyone is frozen on Earth. It is an ice box. Cool. Mercury managed to survive, and that was the thing. It, it, I was even saying before, when it was passing through, it looked like nothing happened. But what happened was everything got slightly off kilter. That's all it took. Slightly off kilter. And now look at these orbital, orbital paths. Because now the sun was pulled in that direction. And now it's left careening somewhere else. If the sun's moving, now you messed up all of these steady orbital paths and everything is out of whack. Now, things might not be like crashing into each other, but well, we're watching the Earth slowly freeze here. We're all done at this point. That like there's nothing we can do. Like if they found out there was a black hole coming our way, we're just screwed. We're absolutely screwed. Depends on how big it is. That was a single solar mass, which is honestly like kind of uh, this baby. It is. That's that's a little one. Um, but the big ones generally aren't found like careening through space. They're found like at the centers of huge clusters and galaxies and whatnot. So we're kind of fine in that regard. I like how the atmosphere is still just slowly going around the Earth. Like this is fine. Let's speed things up a bit. See, like, did we lose any planets? Um. Hmm. We might have. We might have. Um, it looks like Uranus and Neptune might honestly not come back. Saturn too. Saturn is going. Um, was at a at a really bad angle when this all started. We might lose Saturn. Because there's also an actual edge of the solar system. No, they're not showing it here. But um, the sun. Oh, Saturn is coming back. Um, the sun actually gives off this solar wind, is what they call it. And there's a point... Uh-oh. Frickin' Mercury. Mercury, are you okay? <laughs> How is it like on Mercury right now? Well, just saying it is about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're kind of in an oven. What about Venus. Is it got a default to that? Maybe I can change that in settings later. Venus is even hotter. Venus is almost 800 degrees Fahrenheit. The Earth, however, is freezing. <laughs> yeah, everything is so much. Someone turn the heat on. <laughs> so you can actually see the Earth. <clears throat> its surface temperature rapidly changing based on where it is. Because you can kind of tell, like, whoa, God, that it passed so close to the sun at that point. Or rather, it's going farther and farther from it. So, Saturn is making its way back. Uranus, I think, might be gone. <laughs> we might have lost Uranus, which I know you're, you're all really Aww. sad about that. Saturn is overtaking us, actually. There's a lot of velocity in that little guy. Trying to see him. Where'd you go? Oh my god, he's so tiny. No, nope, trying to get Saturn. Saturn. Still zooming, still zooming. God, you gotta zoom so much. It just looks like a perfect sphere. It's kind of weird. <laughs> like its model was like, eh, whatever, man. So, Mr. Sun, Sun. Yeah, that, that done screwed up a lot of stuff. Um, so, in terms of their stuff to mess with, let me go back to the top, because I think we actually skipped some of those up there. Um, solar system, just planet, solar system, comet, Neowise, 100 year anniversary of the eclipse. Um, you know, there's probably a lot of uh, interesting things to dig in here, and I want to make sure that I do leave some of these for you guys. But, of course, um, these are really good ones that just jump to, you, just a generic solar system, and then just to start really screwing with stuff. So, at this point, let's start messing with things. We got Earth doing its little spinny dance. That is neat. That is neat. You can see, like, the day-night cycle 
changing, that's pretty cool. Let's slow this down. What if we almost went to real time? There. Just a few minutes per second. There we go. That sounds perfect. So, we're gonna send something careening towards the Earth. Um, or... Just place something extremely dangerous really close to it. I'm gonna go to tools. Add... Uh, we got galaxies. Nope, that's a little huge. Black holes. Um, I wanna make the smallest black hole I can. Uh, but, at the same time, this is one solar mass. Oh, God! <laughs> um, and that was instantaneous. Because we're at minutes per second. You saw what, like, the kind of force that it took to basically blow up the Earth and how long that took? My bathroom break? And, um, we just instantly turned Earth into that. God! <laughs> well, I'm kind of curious now. What happens to the rest of everything? It's just it's deletes in the in like the blink of an eye. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! And Venus. Beow, there it goes. <laughs> Oh god, we screwed this up so badly. <coughs> screwed this up so badly. And, there, and there's so many god crazy things that are out there just like floating around cuz really like the universe is this chaotic. We we don't want to think that it is, but it's seriously this chaotic. Now we're going crazy fast right now. To think that there's any order in all this is just like is maddening. <laughs> Acro says so. Alex, so Alex is the reason 2020 is like this. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So hold on. I was going to point something out. I'm pretty sure my chat wasn't working the entire time. <laughs> oh yeah, I was wondering why you weren't reading chat. Yeah, um, completely my bad. So, I'm just now seeing all of that. So I'm going to try and skim through it, because I felt like, I wasn't right. Like, where all my chat go? <sighs> Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to read literally all of them, just because I can. Um, Chris, at the very top, I, I don't know who that is. Um, quickly play this game is to keep adding extra digits until something crazy happens. <laughs> Uh, there's five minutes on this game, we're both still, uh, oblivious to my presence in the voice channel, no, this is your squad, I, I can't, I don't even have enough monitors to see that, though. Uh, Fire Flame Game was well, asking, Well, that what sounds is like this? a you more problem. More, more monitors, it? man. Uh, it's just been channeled, this game looks fun as heck. It is, this game is so interesting, so fun. Even with, like, no goals, like, I'm not, like, big on sandboxes, normally, um, but this is just really interesting, it's just so fascinating to just mess with this kind of stuff um hey keith i am doing okay i'm sorry i'm answering you like hours later hope you ever see that i said that um it's one of those uh coin games at the mall what home run what yeah, i'm sure it was it made sense at the time um one thing's to go boom who's in the voice chat yeah that was a little late yeah squad fam and cameron uh hey ethan sorry hamster go burr okay burr just that took like took <laughs> hours. Sun go bye bye five billion year. The sun as we know it. Don't even understand this game. Way too dumb for it. Simulation for a solar system with different scenarios. Uh, you're teaching a virtual astronomy class today. Um, so Alex is the reason 2020 is like this. <laughs> all right. So after all that time, we've actually just been going days per second. This isn't even that fast. That's how quickly these things are screaming. Earth is the basically the mass of the sun due to getting consumed by that thing. Alex is late again. Oh, shush you. <laughs> Let's make it go even faster. 
Are they gonna try and sustain that? Like, is this just normal? We've basically lost everything else. They're gone. And that's what happened if, like, one, all it took was one. You know, I'll let them go. Or I'll try and let them go. Sheesh. No, Jupiter's hanging around. Oh, no, poop. Then, oh, it almost died. <laughs> oh, God. All right, let's, let's reset. Um, we're gonna go back to a solar system. Or, though, um, open all. <laughs> Let's do... Right, let's go back to the regular solar system and return everything normal. Let's, let's go, go to the Milky Way. Let's go bigger. We're going to go to the whole Milky Way. And what we're going to do is the same thing we did before. We're going to place a black hole. And watch what the bad boy does. So I've been talking about doing neutron stars too. Neutron stars would be really interesting. Basically, like a neutron star is... Kind of like just one step below a black hole to where we can still see it. And they're super fascinating. Where like I I forget how much um their mass is just for comparisons, but um people are saying like just like a teaspoon full of the mass of what a neutron star is made of would be like trillions of tons or something. It's it insane. would be a, a teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh as much as Mount Everest. Was that it? <laughs> Wait, it's really? absurd. Yeah, I'm not making this yeah. crap up. They're they're insane. Oh, but the thing yeah, is, right. but a black hole is that, but way more extreme. And if we want to screw with this galaxy, which of course we do, we need to make something much bigger. Though I really could just put some galaxies in here, or throw a baseball at it. <laughs> <laughs> you can right. do that. Black hole. Throw all the of 10 million solar masses. That's a little huge. How about just 10,000? I'm going to place it right here. I don't know if it's going to start smelling that thing. Let's speed it up. Uh, it's kind of bouncing up there. You seeing that? Oh, man. You know, one thing I got to do, too, is make uh, black holes orbit each other. They're gonna, they're gonna careen into each other. Oh, they're coming in. I see what they're doing. See, the thing is, we can't really see them, but they're going into it. I'm gonna try and find it. There it is. Whoa. Oh, it, it like shot through the center. So it's based on the solar masses, right? So think about it. What good is 10 solar masses when the galaxy is like millions, you know, so billions really. Like, what's the difference? So we're we're thinking too small. We are thinking way too small. We gotta make something something serious, and we're gonna slow this down. Just like um a little under a million years per second. And I'm gonna make a ten million million solar mass black hole right here. Really gonna screw with this, I hope. Where are we here? Where did I place it? Hello? I swore I put you around here somewhere. We'll probably see it when things start speeding up. I hope so. Man, it's so hard to even tell because there's so much going on. Or did it just go into the center? <laughs> it might have just like, at least that's what I would expect it to do. Basically join this, orbit into the center, and just careen into whatever is deep in there. Yeah, I don't see our black hole anymore. Whoa. Yeah, I can very quickly rotate the whole thing. It's like yanking God, so many galaxies around like it's nothing. We gotta oh yeah, see the screwing up in there? It's definitely in there. We just don't know where. 
But look at the chaos that thing's causing. Oh, God. Some want to go the other direction. Oh, now it's all messed up. <laughs> oh, jeez. But, well, like, with all these, like, galaxies and stuff, they just, like, start orbiting and eventually, like, they start shooting away from each other. It's like, what's so neat about all this? See, like, now it kind of formed it and it's spinning even faster. Oh, dude, tell me they're all gonna, like, converge into a single point. It'd be so amazing. Oh, Cause, like, Because oh. basically, like, that's, like, what they theorize that the universe is doing. Um, like, because the way that space and time, we know that it can be stretched. It can actually, like, be further compressed on itself or go so big that kind of like a balloon it just kind of reaches a limit before it can't do anything it's it's uh entropy where like you're not you can stretch it so far and eventually you're not gonna have any more energy left and the whole thing freezes and stops till it comes back in on itself just through its own force Ah, the big crunch. The big crunch <laughs> turns it into one point again until it just, like, superheats down into nothing and then just, boom, does the whole thing again. At least, we hope so. Man, that is so chaotic in there. We basically have, like, two supermassive black holes orbiting each other, stirring up a cluster in this thing. I want to... What's this? Who would it be like to live in a galaxy like that? <laughs> you wouldn't feel the difference. Turn off collisions. Oh, I it's see. It's just here. so massive that you wouldn't. Right, I mean, and we're a, looking at like million. 2 million years a second. We're just trying to understand this. Yeah, and like a few million or billion years, uh, the Milky Way galaxy is projected to collide with Andromeda galaxy. Right. But the thing is that it's just, there's so much space between stuff that we wouldn't feel the difference if we were still alive. It, I mean, everything, depending. Everything would just, you know. Eventually would we would just... be fine. Yeah. Our solar system is fine. Because here, even this looks like it is absolute maddening chaos. We could still live in that. Because based on where everything's going, it's it's getting close to this, yes, but it also rockets away from it. And the thing is, we're, gonna, we're looking at millions of years. So... This seems to be sustainable. It's actually not destroying itself. You could live in this. The thing is, if I put this down to normal time, or eventually, really, just normal time would look like this. Paused, right? And, and now my eyes are, like, keeping it swirling, even though nothing should keep it swirling. For your entire lifespan, you would just be in here, right? Or even if, you know, you're able to live, like, a million years... That's all you had. That was it, right? And that was your entire life. Just like from there to there. So even if you're in the middle, so you're in the middle of that chaos, you go from like there to there. And your system is fine. It's just the system itself is like physics applied to it once it's outside of it. It's like almost like everything inside is treated like one object. And that's what's being moved around. And all of the individual points as you can see, are still technically safe. Even this is going crazy fast. But yeah, we need to make it even worse. I know you're all thinking we need to make it worse. Because there's an there's another black hole over there, and one over here. And here, and here. There, boom. We now have five freaking supermassive black holes, and I want to see this absolute five. madness. Oh, yep, yeah, now they're really starting to mess with stuff. I mean, I just wish I could have, like, tracked them. Definitely could have if I would like, clicked on... Ooh, found one. Alright, so, we're gonna follow this guy. No. No, you. I wanna be your friend. Here we are. We're gonna follow this guy to the ends of the earth inside of all of that. And we're gonna see what he does. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, so it's... That's what I kind of thought. It was gonna, like, fling us around. 
because there's so much in there, its mass is so much bigger, it could just toss us out. But remember, on top of all this, because we're playing with black holes, sure they're sort of, they were fine when we had a sustainable orbit in there, but now, if you honestly sent a black hole through there, remember what happened when we sent one that was one solar mass and it actually went through our solar system? Then you have messed up everything. We say you're fine, but all the planets and stars in here are intermingling in ways that they just really shouldn't. It's a whole cosmic orgy that we just don't want to be a part of. <laughs> God. You made it all funny. You did it funny. Funny. A funny. It's been too long since I've gotten to play games. I want to actually like get down and like just play stuff and talk with you guys because it's been so long. I feel really bad hey, about hey, that. Hey, I am one of the guys. I you am one of the guys. I is in included. You is the I included. Is, I got a feeling That's this is nice. actually just going farther and farther yeah, away. Ugh. Just trying to get back to where we were, but still. Anyway, this has been very cool messing with all this today. Oh, Lord. That is nice. That is awesome. It's been very cool getting to mess with this today. Um... I may get a chance to stream some more with you guys later. There's a lot of other stuff that I want to do. Um, a lot of other games I want to mess with and play with. Um, but there's also some more that I want to finish. There's been a lot of stuff I have been starting lately and not a lot that I have been finishing. A lot of um, developers have been, um, like in this instance, letting me play with their toys and just share them with you guys. So definitely support these these people this is something that's really interesting and i would definitely want to mess with some more for later um but for like the sake of just showcasing everything and showing like the tools um there's so much here to play with that it's just amazing um might even like load up something else while we are in here just because we were basically trying to simulate this let's go to the galaxy cluster and slow it down while we're talking um so anyway yeah, let's get a good shot of all that craziness. Oh, man. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I really wanted to showcase this because this is, like, uh, if you guys know me, you know I love space stuff, and I haven't really had an opportunity to show any space stuff. Um, might have something to do with why I'm such a huge Metroid freak. Um, I don't know, but anyway, it does remind me, though, of the upcoming episodes that we're going to be doing. I was letting you guys vote and give me ideas in the Playing With Myself channel, and I was kind of posting some because we were, we were rapidly approaching the end of the year. And um, if I remember correctly, um, the first week of January was the first Playing With Myself. Was that correct? I can go check for you. Yeah, I'm curious because I'm trying to... Um, I am planning something for a one-year anniversary for it. Um, as well as uh, figure out what I'm going to be doing for the new year for it. I have a lot of stuff planned. And uh, I do know that it w I started it for sure this year because I was it was really hard for me to give up um, doing all of those extra videos and things that I would do all the time just to like let go of what was safe and felt right and uh, change it all just for the sake of something that I always really wanted to do, which was make review videos, but still like funny stuff. I'd been wanting to do that forever, and um, so I was trying to see, like, you know, uh, aside from the, the big stuff that I want to showcase to you guys, I have a video where I'm talking about the series uh, planned that'll hopefully get made before, you know, the end of uh, the year, um, so I can showcase it around that time of the one year anniversary of it, um, as well as start, of course, a whole new series of them. We are getting really close to the end of the year, so I've actually got... Yes, the... January 2nd was the first playing with myself. Okay, so it was the first week of the year, so the first Friday. Um, I wonder if... Uh, would that make it 53? You have 49 episodes so far. Right, but it, with 52 weeks in a year, but if one of those weeks only had two days... You see what I'm saying? Or three days. Uh, I see. Right, is it actually going to be 53? I mean, it doesn't matter, but still, as long as I know, like, uh, 
getting around that point. Um, so basically, in terms of, um, I don't really want to leave the screen on here, because if I do, then it's going to uh, lose our music, and I don't want to do that. So, uh, yeah, looking at the calendar, we basically, we have this week, which, by the way, is already written, and um, I was going to record it today. Um, the only thing was, I, you will see I needed Kim's help in it. When the video is up, you will see that I, I needed some help, and I'm not able to do it right now. Um, I might be able to record it later today, actually. We'll see. Um, eh, today's not a good day. Maybe tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, um, the, the following week has also been uh, decided, so that's two. Uh, we have the one for the 18th, and um, one goes up on Christmas. Um, aside from that, um, the one after that is going to be the first. So there's one, two, three, four more episodes left. Uh, for the year I'm pretty sure I know what they are I just want to point out like how the galaxy's just like all disintegrated through everything in all directions it's just crazy um, I actually have this document while we're at the tail end of this so I can kind of share with you guys while we're in this star cluster so I'm looking right now at um, a list of games that I really want to cover um, the top like uh, five or six or so um, Kim and I were trying to prioritize based on how soon she thinks I need to get these put out. Like, it was part of her input to saying, like, No More Heroes is really relevant. Aside from the fact that she, like, I know you love that game. Just do it. <laughs> um, so I was like, I'm going to try and work in No More Heroes pretty soon. So that's a really big one for right now. And I'll make sure that people know what that series is and can appreciate it for the upcoming stuff. And, um... From then on, there were lots of videos that I was uh, prompting to you guys saying, like, I want to know what you all want out of this. <laughs> Your Discord just died. Um, well, Squad, I hope you at least had this up so you can still hear what I was saying. But anyway, um, this one coming for this week. By the way, you can end this. If you don't want to hear any spoilers for upcoming Playing With Myself ideas, or if you want to, like, vote on them, let me know which ones of these you really like. Head to the Playing With Myself room on Discord. Um, so, we've got Super Metroid coming next, and this was one that I had been wanting to do for a really long time, I haven't done another Metroid in a long time, and I'm kind of going in order of the Metroid games from release, and, um, that brings me to Super next, and, um, I've actually got my drawing on the wall of the whiteboard right now, it's a melting Crocomire. But he still looks as silly oh, wow. as he does, so I'm, I'm really excited about Super Metroid. Um, a friend of mine from work actually had a cartridge of Super Metroid he was going to give me for the video. And he searched all over uh, yesterday and the day before, and he couldn't find it. And he feels really bad about it. I'm like, it's not a big deal. Um, that's one of those games that I definitely would want to like have a cartridge of and just like set in a shrine and just like, set up, because I have so much Metroid stuff I want to show. But anyway... Uh, Super Metroid is next. Um, I'm actually... I should rearrange this very slightly. Because, uh... The next one that I was writing was another one that was requested for a long while. Uh, which was Super Smash Bros. Melee. That's also kind of relevant right now. There's a lot of stuff going on with Melee that is unrelated to its review. But, um... That's one that I think I should probably get covered and at least explain to people... Why Melee is so special. Um, and what's so great about Melee. Um, so I kind of think that's a good one we should try and prioritize by the end of the year. Because that's the thing, I was thinking, like, if I only, what am I going to do for the end of the year? There's so many videos that I'm like, I need to make this. Like, it just occurred to me, um, uh, some games that I was like, I hated that game, but so many people love it. I've got to review that and tear it apart. We should even zoom out just to see what all... Oh, God, man, this is nuts. Just in a star field. i got to stop getting so distracted. Um, also on this list, I have Blasphemous. It's another huge game came out, uh, a big Metroidvania. Crazy one I really want to talk about. Uh, to the Moon. Um, now that's older, but boy do I want to talk about To the Moon. I don't even know how I'm going to review To the Moon. I just really wanted to talk about To the Moon. Um, so that was four. I don't know if those are the four that I'm going to be doing for sure this year. Well, I mean, Super Metroid, Smash Melee, I've, Melee I've already started writing. And Super Metroid is finished writing, so 
those two for sure probably gonna happen. I have two more this year. So those Blasphemous and To The Moon are iffy ones. Um, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth slash Hacker's Memory is another really big one that I'm not sure if, like, that's something you want to see because that's, like, a, the Pokemon scene. It's an alternative thing to Pokemon. Especially right now, we all kind of need a... Well, if you're a Pokemon fan, disenfranchised Pokemon fan more specifically, finding an alternative is um, definitely something you're interested in, so... I went through and I played all of that game. It's a long game, just so that I could finally make a review, and I've been putting it off because there's so many other things that keep popping up or requests that come in, and I'm like, oh, I gotta do that, and it never happens. Uh, the Witcher 2, been a long time since we covered the first one. Kim really wants me to get up to 3, and 2 is really good, too. Kim recommended Hey You Pikachu. We have all the stuff for it, too. Hey You Pikachu. She wants it. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, Portal, Horizon Zero Dawn. This was supposed to be my episode one, okay? I ended up changing my mind, and I, I was like so needing to talk about Nier Automata when I first uh, played it, that that became my episode one. Um, so I'm thinking about making episode, the first episode I do of the next year is Horizon Zero Dawn, so that one may get moved up. In fact, just to make sure that I see it, I'm gonna yoink, grab it, and kind of scoot it above. Um, anyway, other big stuff. Star Fox 64. Like, why that's a big deal. Crazy Taxi. Sonic the Hedgehog. There's random things in here. Um, Kim was even recommending these. Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Nino Kuni. I hated that game. Though I love Studio Ghibli <laughs> stuff. I hated Nino Kuni. I hate it. And I will tell you why I hate it. Also, I really don't like Horizon Zero Dawn either. Which is why it was a, such a great first episode for playing with myself because the better episodes I have found for doing this are the ones where I am fighting with myself over it. Half of me finds it awesome and loves the game and the other half is like no, no, no and that's like what makes a better dynamic when they agree too much then it's just like a normal review you know and it, it didn't really need to be a playing with myself review if that makes any sense. Can we, like, cycle you guys back together again? Oh, man. So much going on. Millions of years are happening. Um, also, after that, we've got uh, Kirby's Adventure, an NES game. Um, God of War 2018. I haven't even reviewed the old God of Wars yet, but the new God of War is so interesting and so well-designed and so good that I feel like I need to talk about it. Um, I don't know if it's a great playing with myself episode, though, so I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, Rayman Legends, uh, Nintendogs, clearly Kim was influencing this. Yoshi's Island, I really loved that game. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> I'm currently playing through Phoenix Wright, by the way. So I do play through a lot of games just trying to, like, get through them offline so that I have the information so that I can add more games to that, uh, that game's, uh, resume that I've got so that... What is going on with that guy? See that? Anyway, add more games to that resume so that there are more options for you guys to bring up. Uh, Chrono Trigger, I'm also playing right now. Really great game. Um, FF10 and 10-2. Kim is playing through those, and she says it's one of her favorites, and I'm still looking at them like, you crazy? <laughs> They're okay, but you crazy? Yeah. Uh, Super Mario Brothers, the original, which, by the way, it, enticement of that one. For one, I don't even have a single Mario game on here yet, which I find really weird. But Super Mario Brothers is the very first video game I ever played. And I want to point this out. While playing it originally on my Game Boy Color, I could never beat it. The farthest I could get was to Bowser himself in the final stage. And I, could, I never got past him. And it plagued me for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and just recently, it occurred to me, like, um, a couple weeks ago, maybe even just one week ago, I need to use Nintendo Switch Online to play that game and finally beat it. And I did. I finally got past Bowser. And it was, it's a super unsatisfying ending of that game, but whatever. I mean, I, I did it. I did it, dang it. And then, and then Toad said, nice job, but the princess is in another castle. <laughs> He, ro he robbed you of your victory. <laughs> anyway, I have another 
simulation thing for us really quick while that thing is blowing up. Just want to make sure we can even see the speed. There it goes. All right, so um, after that, Mario Kart Double Dash. If I'm going to pick a Mario Kart, I actually, Mario Kart comes up in the Melee review. Um, but Mario Kart Double Dash, I think, is a more interesting one to talk about. Um, Overcooked. Not a lot of indie games are seem to be making it on here. What happened? Where did Supernova go? All right, that, that kind of glitched out. Um, yeah, let's get a random galaxy collision. I'm going to slow this sucker down. Simulation 2 galaxies are uh, randomly placed near each other. The gravitational attraction between the two galaxies pulls them together until they merge. Dude, that's awesome. I'm going to leave it like that for a bit. Um, Super Mario Odyssey. Brilliant game. Uh, Xenosaga Episode 3. Kim is clearly involved in this. Uh, Metroid Fusion. I guess I'm, at this point, writing down, like, once we get to finally down to this point of ones that I have recommended, um, I need to start doing what I call sequels again, basically. Revisit a series and keep moving with it, because otherwise we're going to be sitting on them forever. So Metroid Fusion, and as soon as Fusion is over, I, I got that covered, I can do the Prime Trilogy. That one is... Very important that I feel like I cover soon because Prime 4, people need to know why that is such a big deal. And Prime 1, 2, and 3 all need their own videos. So I gotta do Super and Fusion first. God Eater 2. I'm working through it. Um, that's one of those that I'm I've been playing, but uh, it's it's a it's a long game. And um I I got a lot to say about this one, especially compared to the first one, because there's surprisingly not a lot that has changed. But story-wise, they're uh, we'll shelve it for later. Um, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now, that's been flown around a few times from you guys, and uh, I'm not a big fan of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> it's okay. I think it's one of the most overrated games ever. But it's still very, very good. But still, you know, I, I, can, I can easily do a playing with myself on it where I have to do both sides. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. It's probably the next Metal Gear. Obviously, we just did a Metal Gear, so this is a long ways off. Um, but Peace Walker should be next. And, um, by the way, little tease, what I might do, like how I did my Fortnite joke review, um, by this point, we are probably going to be near April. Well, whenever we get to this point. If we're near April, I want to make sure that I do a, a, a joke video where I basically do something similar to that, but I'm reviewing Ground Zeroes. And the video is basically 30 seconds because I'm like, wait, that's all it is, and it's over. And <laughs> and then like <laughs> next week, then we'll do Phantom Pain, and it's the real review of what that is because, you know, the joke of what Ground Zeroes is. Um, so anyway, uh, Uncharted 3, that'd be a huge one too. Ch uh, Squad, I don't even think I ever talked to you about um, the Uncharted 2 video that I did. That one's uh, oof, that was uh, doing Uncharted ones is fun, but it is hard. <laughs> They're all, each video is kind of challenging in its own way. They all kind of bring their own uh, issues to the table. Um, Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. That will be a blast. Oh, I'm looking forward to that one, honestly. Um, yes. Um, and, and honestly, like, anybody listening to this, if you, uh, this is a random list. Okay, so um, this is really just like, I want to cover this game. And um, if it's something that you really, really want to see, let me know. I'll try and work it in sooner. There are some that I'm like, this seems really relevant and important, and we really should be talking about this now. So some of those I am kind of pushing up myself to make sure that we do. But other than that, I want to make sure that I'm doing stuff that you want to watch. Um, so, Pokemon Snap. Oh, God. <laughs> it's such a strange game. <laughs> but it's also a really good game. So it's something. there's something worth talking about there. Um, Uncharted 4, once I get to Uncharted 3, I'm definitely going to be doing 4 at one point. Uncharted 4 is... Uh, it might be the pinnacle of that series, and a lot of people don't think that, but... God, 4 is so good. <laughs> um, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes and 5, we mentioned that. Metroid Prime, as well as its trilogy. Once I can finally get around to playing them... Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. I definitely want to talk about that game. I'm just not done with it. Um, 
River City Girls. I loved River City Ransom, and when I was like, wait for her, it's making a River City game? After all this time, I jumped on it, and Kim and I have been playing it. It is hilarious. It is so much fun. And um, I don't really get a lot of time to play it, though. She's not been feeling the best, understandably. She's uh, now kind of like middle to... I'm just going to say middle of Trimester 3. So, baby's coming. Baby's coming. Um, Pokemon Gold and Silver Plus Remake. So, this was something I was bringing up to Kim. So, I said, you know, it's kind of weird now, Pokemon review-wise, because I did... Um, I, I, my second video, I believe, was Pokemon X and Y. And I was going to do Pokemon reviews of the generations, you know, of those games. But the problem is, I ended up doing Pokemon opinions. Well, actually, the next one I did was ranking the generations. Because it was basically me cheating and reusing an old script of... Um, uh, God, what was it? It was meant for playing with myself. No, God, not, not the old series. It was... Uh, what was that called? Let's be honest. It was called Let's Be Honest. And um, I never really... I mean, I, I liked the idea, but something just wasn't quite there. It was too serious. You know, it, I think that's why I didn't like Let's Be Honest as much. It was too serious. And um, so, anyway, I reworked it into a Playing With Myself episode. And then after that, I did the Pokemon Opinions. And that just recently ended. And um, so, getting all the way up to that point, then I'm like... When am I going to do Pokemon Generations again? Because I did, you know, all of them up to that point. So, Kim was saying, like, okay, well, she really likes Heart... She wanted. She said, I want to see a Heart Gold Soul Silver. I said, but if I'm going to do that, I would rather do, like, say, like, one of the two. Kind of like how I did with um, Black Mesa and Half-Life. Have one of the two mainly focus on Gold and Silver, and the other on Heart Gold Soul Silver. And then do the same thing with Ruby Sapphire, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire. So that way I can kind of hurry it up because I don't want to tread the same water twice. You know, 7.8, too much water and all. I want to make sure that we have enough yeah. water. But still, um, what what difference does it make having a video of gold and silver and a heart gold, soul silver? Like, I don't... It's it's too hard making the videos for me to you know not try and where would them in. where would crystal and uh, emerald fit into those categories? I'd probably just mention them, you know, because um, it's basically that gen. Maybe I should because would it make sense to say Pokemon Generation Two? But if that's the case, then X and Y should be renamed Generation Six. So then you'd have to put in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire into that. Well, no, because I was consider. Yeah, cause that's the problem. I was counting it as the regional thing, not its actual generation of Pokemon in it. See, that's where it gets hairy. Um, yeah. And I'm not sure yet, so... And honestly, I don't care. I'm pushing Pokemon off so much. Um, there was even this recent thing I just saw on Twitter. Um, it was in an old... Uh, retranslated interview with, I think, Masuda uh, in the Diamond and Pearl days. And he was talking about their... Um, I don't want to paraphrase these people at all, so of course, just check my Twitter if you want to see exactly what he said. Um, I did retweet it. And, I, and he said something along the lines of, um, when they are designing new Pokemon games, they are not paying any mind to previous fans. It is 100% aimed at getting new players. I saw yeah, that, that's... and I was like, I suspected that, but now I have no respect for you at all, because that is one of the worst ways to try and run this game company. It's basically you are saying 100%, I am in it for the money. I don't care about what yeah. you think. And you're like, why? That's basically what they said. So I saw that and I was like, you know, what? I'm done. I I'm just done with that. So anyway, I only had so one more on this list that I wrote the same for ideas. I put to everybody, but they refuse to listen. I know. No. And unfortunately, one of the best performing videos on my channel right now is the one where I say I'm not playing Pokemon on my channel anymore, and it's people just fighting. Pokemon fans are <sighs> they're horrible. Yeah. And you can like Pokemon and not be horrible. There just happens to be so many Pokemon fans anymore that. 
Unfortunately, the silent majority, which I assume is the silent majority of players who are just fine, just, they just enjoy their game, and I, I get that, but eventually you're going to become disenfranchised to it, and to be fair, it took a really long time for me to fully become disenfranchised with it, and I got another video I want to talk about later on this where I feel like I don't even know if I can shiny hunt anymore or play Pokemon games as they come out. There's a couple that I have told Kim, I said, I still may. Like, new Pokemon Snap. That's not really, you know, the new Game Freaky thing. It's just like, hey look, you just go around taking pictures of Pokemon and it's just a good time, you know, but is it a $60 game? No. I'd, I'd pay 20 bucks for it, maybe. Maybe. But $60, heck no. Um, if they made a Let's Go Johto, maybe. You know, because I love Johto, but there were a lot of problems with the Let's Go games. So, even still, I'm, I'm so hesitant. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, just so I can finish this list off, um, the last one I had on here, it occurred to me, this is a perfect playing with myself video. Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. That game is horrible. But it's also great. But it's mostly horrible. So I need to have that dynamic of that argument going down, you know, so that it's clear of, like, what I really feel about all that. Um, so, Squad, if your thing isn't functioning right now, you can type into the chat, let me know if there's any games or ideas that you had for those that you want me to add to that monstrous list, or any franchise you don't want me to ignore, um, because that's a lot of games I just read, and that honestly could get us through upwards of, it like, half the year? I gotta, I gotta count them up, but that could be about half the year, if not more. Um, so I want to make sure we know what we're gonna do. And there's things that are probably gonna pop up all of a sudden, and we're like, I gotta cover this immediately. Like, uh, Doki Doki Literature Club popped up, and I was like, I need to rip this game a new one. Because what it's doing <laughs> is wrong. And people don't... Uh, Anyway, watch that video. But anyway, that was one where I was like, I just need to do this now. And sometimes that happens. Or I'm like, I got to push this up. I got to do this immediately. And, um, you know, so I want to make sure that we're doing, you know, the other series on here justice. Because there's a lot of them where I'm like, I really want to cover it. But what Kim was saying was make sure that it's something that needs to happen as soon as possible. It's like the best way to consolidate these. Because I remember when I first started, I was basically like, Practically pulling random games off the shelf <laughs> like oh cool. I'll, I'll do last story That's a great game that nobody remembers and like ring fit adventure Which in hindsight was a really good one to do because that's something that Someone would rather see a review of you know, that's what I'm thinking too Like when I want to see a review of a game It's usually because I'm hesitant or I don't know enough about it or I want to hear someone's opinion who I trust on it So for example like Phoenix Wright might be a good one on that because you're like but, like, what exactly is that? You know, or, like, how does that even work? Like, is that fun, though? You know, so you'd probably want to see that. And um, that's one of them that I would definitely want to watch, but it's not, like, a timely kind of thing. You know, like, it doesn't matter this year, right now. You know, because as soon as, um, say, for example, um, I remember I, I jumped on doing uh, Xenosaga Episode 1, because there was a lot of evidence that Cosmos might actually get into Smash Brothers. She still might. And if that's the case, and if I was like playing, like, Kim, this would come out on a Friday. Imagine, Cosmos is announced for Smash right when I got this video up. That'd be perfect. Um, so anyway, stuff like that sometimes happens, and I, like, try and work things in. When you get around to it, the Dishonored series would be a good watch. Um, yeah, Dishonored, um, I, I want to make sure that I play it first. Um, and, of course, uh, I was going to say it's up to you, squad, if you want me to do it offline or online and honestly with Dishonored I'm a little hesitant just because of um how long I know it is if it's something that I would if you would rather I do just the playing with myself video on but even still what am I gonna work that in See, there's so many questions so um mostly of stuff that like we know that I have played <clears throat> which is a tremendous amount uh by the way Kim and I also just beat um Golden Axe. Well, the arcade version of Golden Axe, which is different than the console version of Golden Axe, where the end of it, good god, you don't stop at Death Adder, you fight Death Bringer, who is a real bastard. Um, we couldn't even beat that guy. He was insane. I, we were even save scumming. 
and using the rewind feature on the the Sega Genesis thing on Switch, by the way, the little collection. There's a ton of games on there. I recommend it. It's on sale too. Um, but yeah, it was God, it was nuts. Um, I'd like to see your live reaction to the game would be pretty interesting to see. Okay, so to be fair, that'd be better. So if um, it's better that I do a live stream of it instead of trying to make a video, because making a video is really hard. Yeah, especially with a baby on the way. Ugh, with, with the live streams too. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do live streams. That's another conversation for later. Because obviously, like me being able to sit down and not get up and leave every five minutes. Ugh. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, it's obviously something we're going to have to figure out as we go. I'll probably just be live streaming when Kim is here, but that's like the only time I get to see her, so... Ooh. Um, I don't want to have to go back to doing recorded episodes, um, but that's a possibility if I absolutely had to. And then try and basically turn Patreon into more of a playing with myself recommendation thing, or more like choosing from a set selection of games that I'm going to do. Um, but anyway, um, after this, I'm probably going to put up a poll... Um, probably on Twitter. Uh, so if you don't follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter. Do it. There's links below. Um, I'm going to put a poll up that basically says four of the biggest games, uh, based on what you guys are saying here, that you think should be the ones that end the, the year. Well, actually, I should probably shouldn't do four, all things considered. Um, mm, or maybe just to, like, get a taste. Uh, because Super Metroid and Melee, I already mentioned, are coming next. Um, after that, we had, I had on my list, at least, in order, um, eh, well, Horizon Zero Dawn already has one, so I guess Blasphemous to the Moon, Digimon, Cyber uh, Sleuth slash Hacker's Memory, uh, Witcher's 2, it could be any of these. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Cameron, you're on here. Uh, what, what do you think, just outside of those two, for the end of the year? What do you think is so important we have to have it by the end of the year? Hmm. Maybe not even important. Maybe you just want it. Not sure. Uh... You can get back to me on that. How about that? And, and you guys can all do the same thing. You can get back to me on that. Just wanted to make sure that I mentioned it because there's a lot going on. Oh, geez. Look how the galaxy is kind of reforming. It's nuts. Anyway. This has been amazing. This has been Universe Sandbox. It's a really crazy game. I recommend just digging around and messing with this thing. Or if you just need to like zone out and just watch galaxies spin into each other or blow up the Earth. It's all really cool. But anyway, that is all the time I have for this stream. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Remember to like the videos, subscribe for more. Follow me on Twitter, guys, and pay attention to that Discord page. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm making the videos that you want to see. But anyway. I will see you guys in the next stream. Boop.